One and welcome to the Wen Show. There is so much to talk about this yeah. week that I actually had a hard time paring it down. Oh, it's really nice when this happens. <laughs> that I, is that, true. Yeah, the writer was like, "Yeah, I don't know, we've got this and this." I'm like, "Main topic, main topic, main topic, main topic." XQC got an alleged one hundred million dollar deal and is no longer streaming on Twitch. Now on Kick. It's not even an exclusivity deal either. Trucking company tries to hire truck simulator players? <laughs> Dude, reality is stranger than fiction. What else we got here? Uh, we have. I want to talk about it because I think it's interesting. I don't care if you guys don't think it's interesting. Uh, Google is shutting down their domains business. Really? You like picked that? many, many millions of domains that are in Google are going to be sent over to Squarespace. And their agreements are only going to be honored for like 12 months. You picked that over Twitch offering a 70-30 subscriber revenue split with major strings attached because they cannot get a PR win to save their lives? Yep. And Jesus returning <laughs> yeah. to Twitch via AI? <laughs> I was very surprised this was in the dock. We'll talk about that too, though. On the flip side, no one says that. The show is brought to you today by The Ridge. Squarespace and SignalWire. Let's jump right into the big Twitch topic. They have had a really awful time of late. Oh, yeah. The, the last, like, at least a year, two years. Between getting their entire source code leaked to um, losing major streamers to platforms like YouTube and Kick. Most recently, is he the top? I think... Excuse me? Yeah. I think not by subscriber count, but I think by viewership. One of, if not their top creators, XQC, yeah. is now streaming on Kick. Uh, also, I mean, they just aren't helping themselves. So the big news this week was that Twitch announced a new Partner Plus program that has a 70-30 split in favor of streamers. And this is on the money from paid subscriptions. However... There are some major caveats here that really make me question what exactly their intention was with this program. So first of all, streamers must have at least 350 paid subscribers. That does not include prime subs. And this is really weird. It doesn't include gifted subs. Why yeah, not? Because gifted subs aren't recurring. They, they want 350 billing agreements. That's what this is about. That's 100% what this is about. But And that means that you're pretty serious. But they also have a caveat in here that you have to maintain it for three consecutive months. Yeah. So if you have enough of an active community, or at least you have a handful of whales that are willing to gift a bunch of subs to people on the regular, then why not give you the 70-30 revenue split? Because apparently they can afford it. I think there would literally be, hmm, I think, hmm, especially considering you would get half of your money back. I think there would literally be a point in that equation where it would be worth it once you got to a certain subscriber count to, to gift yourself, so. buy yourself up. So I think they actually literally want genuinely unique billing agreements because like people could game this system super hard. Because okay. there's, there's got to be a point where gaining that 20% is worth spending some extra money. But there is a limit. There's a limit to how much people can game it. Because get this, it's applicable to you only if you break this threshold of 350 regular paying subscribers. And then it only sticks with you until you do more than $100,000 in a year, which is a lot of money. Okay, so that's great. Out of the first $100,000, they're doing $70,000 to you, $30,000 to the platform. But then, then after back. that, they go back to the old 50-50 agreement. So they're basically saying, all right, as long as you don't want to make any less than... Okay, so what, what, what's that work out to? It's, so it's five a month times 350. So that's like $1,820. Let, let's, let's say $2,000 a month. 
Unless you're making $2,000 a month, you're not even eligible, right? So pretty much, as long as you're making over minimum wage and less than, you know, a, a, a middle management, you know, white collar job, then you get a decent revenue share. And anyone who's making less than minimum wage doesn't get the good revenue share. And anyone above that who are the biggest contributors to Twitch as a platform, making their site actually attractive, well, they don't. To be clear, I have no skin in this game. I yeah. am barely even a Twitch streamer. Like I, 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 I talked to you guys about this recently. We make eight hundred dollars a month on Twitch. I don't even qualify <laughs> for this. I used I used to make more than LTT on Twitch, which <laughs> that's sad. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> he was basically just funding his video game habit. It wasn't real money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I. It's tough because so many companies are more than happy to dive into this and just lose a bunch of money, uh, cough, cough, kick. Um, but streaming is extremely expensive. And like the 70-30 split, I understand why they don't extend it to everyone. And I understand why uh, there's a bunch of caveats on it. Because especially when you throw in Twitch Prime, which is something that I think a lot of people don't really want to talk about much. Uh, because it's effectively Amazon just throwing free money genuinely at streamers and streamers want to just take it and then not talk about the fact that they're receiving all this extra free money. Uh, throw in the idea of Twitch Prime and then the cost of streaming and the fact that such a massive percentage of Twitch viewers are going to not subscribe to anyone and watch a ton of content. Um, how expensive that is, how much people will watch stream uh, Twitch streams on like a second monitor mode, even more so than I would suspect something like YouTube or some other type of content or Netflix or something, because I know plenty of people personally that will happily just have it as background audio. It's radio. Yeah. It's radio that's really expensive to but, serve. But there's video coming with it, and it's extremely expensive to serve. So, like, I I understand from the platform side of things the economics of this being very difficult. But Twitch is in a really rough spot right now because their competitors are just not caring. Yeah. And Twitch is taking this position of, like, okay, we need to get profitable, but the other ones are not. Kick is doing like the opposite. <laughs> yeah, as far as I can tell, they are throwing money as fast as humanly possible at creators, at their infrastructure. I mean, yeah. this is this is really kind of funny, but as far as I can tell, as far as you can tell, Kick doesn't have infrastructure. Because well, no, they they just run off of uh, Amazon's thing, which is literally just Twitch. Which is and and what's so really, you're wa you're watching Twitch over on. What's really hilarious about this is if I'm Amazon, okay, and I'm looking at what's happening right now, the dynamic between Twitch and Kick. Who do I actually want to win? <laughs> yeah, you might you might literally be better off if Twitch loses. <laughs> because Kick is going to pay their bills. Whereas Twitch, it is, Amazon say, has to pay for these like prime. I don't know why they ever did prime subs. Yeah, really that rough. Made no sense to me whatsoever at oh, any well, point I mean, in time. It's a massive benefit to the streamers, but it's interesting to me that the streamers are just so quick to not care about it, which is yeah, I don't know, very intriguing. But um, yeah, it, it is quite easy. I will say, if 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 Kick wanted to switch off of Twitch streaming. There's a bunch of other services they, they could use to get that done. Right, but as far as we can tell, they, they are just using that. ripped off the Twitch source code. <clears throat> for their front end stuff. Right, <laughs> which uh, Twitch runs on AWS. Yeah. So a big part of the reason that they're using <laughs> Amazon infrastructure is because the code they stole. Oh, no, no, no. It has nothing to do with that. Are you sure? Yeah. How sure are you? Pretty darn sure. Okay. Yep. Because it wouldn't surprise it like me. Has, it's, it's, it is genuinely very plug-and-play, what they're doing. Okay. Right, um, and they're just happening to use uh, Amazon's solution because it is literally Twitch. Um, and why wouldn't you just do that? You know it works. Well, it's you really know, expensive. You know, that's why. Yeah, but if they just don't care about money because they're making all their money off of people gambling, I guess, or something. I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I, it's, I don't know. I don't know. The whole thing is very interesting to me. People being mad at Twitch, thinking that they're being money grubby about this split thing that they're projecting, 
doesn't line up. For I me. mean, they are clawing back, and that's something we've talked about that's a lot. That's rough. Yes, that's that something we rough. talked about a lot. I mean, a lot of the people that are getting this seventy thirty split already have seventy thirty deals, but they or might at least have, did. They might have had it beyond hundred k or whatever. Exactly. Else. So it's still a clawback. Yeah. It, if, it, if, if it's a clawback for anyone, that's that's rough because taking anything back at any point in time is always going to be seen as a negative. I'm altering the deal. Pray I don't alter it further. I mean, yeah. that's literally what villains do. Yeah. And it's it's not the user's fault or more importantly, it's not the partner's fault. People who are building their careers on your platform. It yeah. is not the partner's fault that you made a bad decision and you signed a bad contract. It should still be binding. They didn't force you to give them a 70-30 split or whatever kind of split that was negotiated at any point. And I, I trash it, just to be very clear, I trash on Twitch all the time. Um, I used to be actually quite a fan of Twitch back in the hashtag bleed purple days, all that kind of stuff. I've completely fallen off. Um, but this I can sympathize with just because... They got to they gotta make money eventually. Um, and it might be better, honestly, yeah, um, from your perspective that you brought up earlier. It might be better for Amazon, big daddy Amazon, to look at this situation and see Twitch as a technology company. Because Twitch made the thing that yep. AWS sells as the streaming service. Yeah, and that was ultimately what they wanted. They wanted to own video online. I don't think they ever gave any hoots whatsoever if people are watching Amazon Prime Video, so maybe the, the, the top-level domain shouldn't matter, and if you own it, shouldn't matter, and you should just care that you're the one that serves a video. And if they look at that, maybe they just kind of shrug it off and don't really care. By the way, Kick is down right now. <laughs> so I guess they didn't pay their bill? <laughs> <laughs> so much for that theory! <laughs> Again, the, the so the, the, the stream service thing is like actually completely unrelated. So if if it was well they're probably hosted on AWS anyways, but if if the rest the rest of the site could be up and the streams could be down, but that that doesn't matter. Um the, the, the main like front end of the site and back end of the site is probably hosted on AWS anyways. I haven't looked into it, don't really care. Um But yeah, I don't know. This sucks for any streamers that are now making less because of this, because that's brutal. The fact yep. that a platform can take your lunch is not cool. Oh, I got it. I got it up. There you go. And there's XQC. Yeah. There you, okay. First My stream. First stream. Okay. Something, something, juicer, something. 62,000 viewers. So yeah. what's really interesting to me about that, okay, aside from it just not working. This is probably just it uh, recovering from being just down. Yep. There uh, it goes. Okay. Well, at any rate, what's interesting to me about that is a couple things. Okay, so one, that's probably a big part of the reason they're having trouble right now. Oh, just this massive wave of people coming from yeah from XQC. And number two is back when Mixer. If they're going to spend a hundred million dollars to pull them over, maybe they should be a little bit more prepared. I mean, just to those who live in glass there. houses. We're fine. Yeah. Well, we've had issues. Yeah. At times when we could have easily anticipated. Do we have a hundred million issues. dollars. You want to give me a hundred million dollars, Linus? I mean. Um, we could do more with a hundred million dollars. Just let me know. We're that's ready. That's fair. <laughs> Luke, you know I don't have a hundred million dollars. <laughs> yet. Hey, we just gotta set up crypto gambling. <laughs> we'll be fine. <laughs> Can we just be less ethical and make more money? Honestly. It, it, like sometimes, really. Sometimes sometimes it, it it's it's tempting. It really doesn't it really doesn't seem like anyone cares. Be <laughs> Right? The oh, man. Entire chats oh. talking about the kick.com CEO. They're like, yeah, he just doesn't care. He has an $80 million house. Like, in the blah, he seems cool. Yeah. And I'm sitting here going, y you know how he got the money, right? Gambling wasn't even legal that long ago. It's actually a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do, I, do I have to be the one to say this? It's, it's interesting to me, too, how so many people were against gambling being on Twitch at all. I'm pretty sure we talked about that on WAN Show on this set. So, like, it wasn't even that long ago. And then now a bunch of streamers and viewers are flocking to a site powered by gambling money. Powered by gambling where, uh, I mean... So, like, we gave Twitch this super hard time for allowing it to happen at all. <laughs> and then the second a competitor comes up fueled by gambling money, we're like, Hey! Sweet! Let's go! Let's watch over there. It's, it's, uh, it's interesting to me, but... It is what it is. People are going to people. Yeah, people People just don't seem to care. To be clear, 
we will continue to decline any gambling related sponsorships and all the same stuff that we've done for all of these years we have unless you want to play high stakes blackjack on a float plane at LTX let's go i'm kidding no i was i was about to say i don't think there's a dollar of gambling money in this but i at some point something may have slipped through like we've done sponsor deals on channels that i am not hosting that i don't even know about so it's it, I, but i really don't think so healthcare gambling supplements we've there's a ton of money in those. that space yeah, but yeah, just yeah. man anything people put inside their body so uh, sex actually as well is another category that we we don't um really peddle in um anything people put inside their body we yeah, have no really fans well yeah but that's first party like it's not ah okay 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 yeah, yeah, I, yeah i'm talking yeah, yeah, partnerships yeah, yeah. like yeah, sponsorships yeah. that sort of thing yeah yeah fair enough yeah no that doesn't count that we don't, we don't count. peddle other people's bodies we just peddle our own bodies i mean that's fine fair enough what's wrong with that well, yeah if you've got the ass sets <laughs> Speaking of assets, can we talk about what happened to your face? Oh, yeah. Um, I I know that I was one of the people who told you that <laughs> that pubic chin situation you had going on was utterly unacceptable. Yeah. But I didn't expect you to de-age yourself this was, ten years. <laughs> this was a, this was a process. It uh, this was not the goal we started. <laughs> Oh, too short on that side now. Okay, I'll just actually, fix the side to. Oh, I, too short. Okay, I think I'll just even it out over. Have some progress pictures. Really? Because um, um, we were I was sending okay. them to my mom because I was like, I'm making mistakes. At what point did you? <laughs> at what point did the lawnmower get involved? So this is, <laughs> this is the first. I don't know if we can show the stream. This is the first place I stopped. Yeah. Okay. So I see the problem is that the chin is like this. Yes. Right. You guys aren't gonna be able to see yeah, that very well. But, but the point is, the chin is over here. Yeah. It's. It's side. He's got a side chin. Yeah, yeah. So I was like a little twisted, and and I, I was mm. finding a lot of times with mm. beards, I like lines, mm -hmm. and this was very mm -hmm. rounded everywhere. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, mm -hmm. we still got to work on it. And then there was a there was a mistake with the trimmers. <laughs> yes, which there was. Cut too deep. So then we ended up here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and so almost, that was the point at which I, you needed to knock on everyone's door and let them know that you've moved into the neighborhood, right? It's, I almost, I was very close to just sending it and showing up like that with the stash, um, but but Emma Emma talked me down. Emma was like, no, you've got to get rid of it. I mean, unless so you guys then, are planning to, like, make a video, <laughs> upload a tape... Um, so yeah, and the, at that point I tried to bring that down and then I was like, okay, well now this other area looks like it's like too much. So then I brought that down and then it just ended up here and I was like, well, okay, I guess we'll regrow from here. So the plan is not actually necessarily to keep it here, but this is where we ended up. All right. Someone's up, someone's upset about my sex offender joke. Look, is, oh. if you don't think it's okay to make fun of sex offenders... <laughs> Should have kept the stash, dude. Yeah, Dan. Uh, Dan on the the labs web team. He kind of rocks it. It looks good on him. I wasn't. It felt. Yeah, but the biggest thing for me is like, my my girlfriend Emma looked at it and was like, nah. So I was like, okay, we'll yeah. take it off. If she oh, yeah. liked it, I might have just ran with it. But no, like Emma has taste. <laughs> Emma wouldn't have liked that. <laughs> Then again, she liked the pube beard. She so. she did. She does. If I remember correctly, no, she just went over near the end. I don't know. Yeah, she she did say when we went to go cut it. She's like, yeah, it's too long. It needs to be cut. Back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, right. she was right about that. It so was, that's that's good. Yeah. Um, anywho, um, may I suggest that you invest in something called a trimmer guard? So I have done that now, and oh, it's in the car. Cool. <laughs> Okay, well then, we're good. Man, how did you end up with a completely naked chin, too? Like, what is going on? What is this line? What line? I, I don't know. It's, it's like, it doesn't follow the jawline, 
but it doesn't end at the neck. It just kind of is like in the middle. <laughs> and to be clear, like I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination. I'm an idiot when it comes to this stuff. A I'm just like, eh, like, I don't know, maybe kind of like this. I wish we had a picture of the first time we cut it back because like, I don't know. A big part of this was all we had was a pair of scissors, uh, a razor, and an old beard trimmer that like really doesn't work and doesn't have guards. Okay. Well, that explains everything. <laughs> we were quite limited in the tool set. <laughs> but we've also... Got, we've, got, we've got people suggesting you find a full-service barber. Okay, two problems. One, Luke is not going to get up and go there. Two, Luke is not going to pay them. That's Neither of those these things are, are happening. These are two major problems. Anything yeah. Luke cannot do to himself is not happening unless Emma can do it to him in which case <laughs> is there a topic we're supposed to be on right now <laughs> I, I, Jesus returns <laughs> <laughs> Uh, speaking of Twitch, Jesus returns to Twitch. There's a new AI run 24 uh, hour Twitch stream featuring Jesus of Nazareth answering, answering questions and taking requests. Nazareth such, answering <laughs> questions. Such, such as explaining the gospel through the metaphor of RuPaul's drag race or the Sermon of the Mount uh, through the metaphor of t the Taco Bell dine in menu. What? Uh, Jesus looks like his typical American depiction, also known as white, in a looped video with an AI-generated mouth transported on his face. Some viewers have mentioned that he looks a bit like Luke, probably me from about a week ago. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, da, 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 da. Jesus, as powered by ChatGPT, is an apparently sincere depiction, and its answers typically emphasize love, kindness, and compassion. Uh, it was briefly banned for unclear reasons, and then returned shortly after, which... Okay. Is on brand. Can I just... <laughs> I actually loved that joke, by the way. <laughs> that was really good. That's joke of the stream already. We're oh, barely you. into this thing. Thank you. Um, can I just say, I actually kind of like this. I know there's a lot of applications for, you know, um, large language models, deep learning, machine learning that have like, whoa, very questionable sort of ethical, um, a, a, a very questionable ethical approach. Sure. Okay. And I could see people being, you know, kind of upset by this because obviously it's, literally putting words into the mouth of yeah. their you know prime religious figure or the whatever of right blasphemy? um however however how do i do this without this becoming extremely spicy it's a minefield it's dangerous i do consider it to be a significant problem the number of people who claim to be of a christian persuasion okay who do not seem to have really any familiarity with what Jesus ever said about anything. And if this is a tool that could make it more accessible than picking up a freaking King James Bible, very difficult, very di fun fact. We actually did a unit on the King James Bible in my like public school English 12 class. Do you know why? No. It's the most sold book of all time. Something like that. Yeah, it yeah. was like it, it was like yeah. This is this is how they used to English. Um, ah, because of all the changes over time. That's a really yeah it was, wild subject. Yeah, actually. it was really cool. Anyway, yeah. anyway, the point yeah. the point is, um, it it's it's basically indecipherable. I would say to the average you know student uh, to the average person. Like it's very it's very dense. It's very difficult. It's there's there's a ton of figurative language like it's it's hard to follow along with and so if you could train an ai to kind of answer you know real questions obviously not the taco bell stuff or or whatever else like it would be limited yeah you would have to train you'd have to train it to it'd have to be good 
you know, it would have to not hallucinate. I, I doubt that this implementation is perfect because we don't have perfect large language models yet. And maybe we never will. But all I'm trying to say is I see some potential here. And I think that there are a lot of questions that people are asking themselves about our modern life that as people who claim to believe in these teachings... Um, be able to reference it that way might be faster. They might come to very different answers. Until it starts hallucinating. With an emphasis on love, kindness, and compassion compared to if they didn't, you know, ask a large language model that was trained on the, the life and teachings of this particular figure. I do find the one response kind of funny. Um, concerning the best SMG in COD Modern Warfare 2, while my main purpose here is to share love, wisdom, and guidance based on my teachings and the Bible, I can tell you that many players appreciate the UMP 45 for its versatility and effectiveness in the game. <laughs> I love this. It's not perfect. People got it to talk like a whale. <laughs> <sighs> okay. No, but that kind of makes sense. If it still answers... No, 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 no. That that might make sense because you could ask it to answer in in like the... You know, the... What is what is the blue fish in Finding Nemo? Dora or something? Dory. Dory? Uh, no, you that's know, the explorer you're thinking of, but close. <laughs> she was exploring. Um, <laughs> when, the, when the blue fish like talks like a whale, you can still understand what she's saying. Yeah. So if it still answers the question yeah, accurately, I mean, okay. like who cares? It doesn't know you're not actually a whale. Maybe we figured out whale to English text communication. They're working on that. So like, who knows? Man, Jesus keeps up with the meta. All <laughs> right. Well, at any rate, um, a very interesting application and one I wouldn't have thought of, but no. one that I actually think is kind of cool i mean people used to wear these bracelets right you know wwjd yeah you can't ask your bracelet this could be this could be more accessible for people who and look i'm not taking a stance on this one way or the other that yeah. people should or shouldn't be interested in the teachings of this particular figure that i'm not even going to take a stance on whether this figure ever existed or didn't or whatever i don't i don't no care about stances were taken at all none of that is the point literally not standing actually seated the point is if this makes these teachings more accessible to people who, who want them. claim to actually want them it could be a good thing that's all. All right. Speaking of bad things. Yeah. What's Google next, Google sells Google domains to Squarespace. I don't think we're supposed to do another topic, but Dan doesn't put things on the thing. <sighs> Way to go, Dan. You're ahead of time. Oh. So we can do merch. We can come back to Google later. Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's see what we got for you. Um, Kick is apparently still down. Oh, boy. Hey, LLD, excited Should to... we oh, no. kick it? Oh, he's got jokes. Uh... Yeah, you still have the best joke of the land show. God. I'm not, I'm not going to beat that. <laughs> hey, LLD, excited to add a fine addition to my water bottle collection. When you worked a customer-facing role at LCIX, what were your biggest pet peeves with customers and why? I hated it when people insisted on spending money on stuff that didn't make sense because they were dumb fanboys. That drove me absolutely crazy. Seems like you still got that problem. Yeah, I still have a chip on my shoulder about it. It just, I, I, it kills me. In fact, we actually shot a video earlier this week where I, I went off script. I just went on this like rant about um, quad FX. Okay. Do you remember quad FX? Yeah. It was, in my humble opinion, the single worst consumer CPU platform of all time. The worst. I challenge you. Name a worse I know, one. I don't know. Yeah. Some, find me something worse. And I will come up with an argument. And, okay, I'm not talking about, like, some Cyrix crap or whatever. I'm talking, like, AMD, Intel, mainline. And not just... Obviously, there was stuff that existed that was slower, but I mean, for no, its I knew, I knew what you time, meant. I knew what you meant. for its time, <laughs> name something worse. And you can't just say Celeron. Yeah, there were Celerons that were not a great value or whatever, but there were Celerons that were outstanding. The Celeron 300A was freaking legendary, right? 
Pentium 1. No, Pentium 1 was awesome. You could play video games. Man, it was wild. No, 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 no. Yeah, it's not about speed. It's about when it comes out at the time compared to everything else that is out and at the dollar value comparison and all that kind of stuff. What is its features, stability, those types of things. Yeah, and okay, people are talking Itanium. I said consumer, though. And also, Itanium was trying to achieve something. It was trying to something, something, 64-bit architecture, something, something, you know, data center. At least it had a purpose. What? Oh, man. People are, people are really showing that recency bias here. X299? Like, yeah, it wasn't no, a great no, value. Definitely not. But it had a reason for existing. It was at least, you know... And not great value is not the same... Yeah. Q6600 was legendary. That was How a great heck? CPU. How could you even possibly type that out? That actually, like, offends me. Weren't there a bunch of those in Scrapyard Wars? Uh... Q6600? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Q6600 those are like awesome. actually incredible. What are you talking about? They were relevant for so long. AMD Bullsdozer was bad, but the pricing, they priced it appropriately eventually. So you could build a budget functional computer with it. Quad FX <laughs> drew more power at idle. <laughs> Then most high-end gaming machines at the time drew under load. I don't think I've ever seen one. I oh, just really? read about them. Yeah. And I like knew to hate them and therefore none of my friends ever got one and no one that I ever knew ever got one and all that kind of stuff. But like, I don't know if I ever actually saw one. So here's the thing. The, the tirade that I went on in the middle of making a video about quad effects, it's sort of the sequel to our video on Skull Trail where I went, oh, okay, this was a $5,000 computer from 10 years ago. How does it hold up? This was like the peak. This was the apex at the time. What can we still do with it? And it, you know, it kind of, you know, power consumption sucked. And yeah. there were some things that weren't very good, but it kind of held up pretty well. Quad FX was the competitor to Skull Trail. They came out at the same time, except nobody talks except about it. Skull Trail was sick. Because Quad FX was terrible. Yeah. And so the premise of the video is hey, it's the. It's the slower, dumber, uglier sequel to that video. <laughs> <laughs> and so I went off on this rant because it used to be that, man, NCIX did not have very good customer data protection practices. Literally anyone in the company with no logging or additional authentication required uh, could look up an invoice number by number, and they were sequential. Oh, yeah. So you could just key in numbers yeah. and just see invoices. Um, and with my level of access, I could look at invoices by what people bought. So, like, for example, if I wanted the address of one of the Vancouver Canucks who regularly shopped at NCIX, I could have just gotten it. I didn't because I'm a good boy. Uh, or, okay, if I wanted to, man, if sometimes I have sort of a nefarious brain, I, I like to think that my moral compass, it keeps you me... You like keep yourself in bounds. Yeah, it but... keeps, me, keeps me on the path. But I was sitting there going, you know, I bet people who buy extreme editions probably have a lot of cool shit in their house. <laughs> yeah. Honestly. Yeah. It, it, it surprised me that they never patched this and that no one who worked there ever just like had that occur to them and did stuff. And I was just like, I don't know, well, whatever. Anyway, the point is... I could, I could pull up customer information very easily. And one of the things that I did on a couple of occasions, not with just web orders, but with system orders, because I was in charge of the systems division. Mm. One of the things that I did on a couple of occasions is I saw system invoices for Quad FX. I pull up the record, got on the phone, and tried to talk the customer out of it. <laughs> <laughs> more than once <laughs> because it was so bad that's like, really funny hey i'm from ncix and i'm here to help um, can we find you something different can i give you something that performs better and costs less and is more stable and i can't promise a better upgrade path but I can I can promise you'll like it better, please. It'll consume less power, please. And 
there were people I couldn't talk out of it. So I once had to build a quad effect system. It was the most unstable <laughs> piece of f***ing s***. I wonder how that person felt afterwards, knowing you had tried to talk them off the wall, and then they get this computer, and it's just the worst experience. <laughs> That's got to rot away at you, because every time that your computer just sucks for whatever reason, you know this person tried to contact you and tried to save you, and you said no. So you're not, like, you're not going to go back and, like, try to get an exchange or something. Because, like, you're going to try to, like, defend your purchasing decision. That's what people do. It's oh, absolutely. It's the cognitive dissonance, man. Yeah. You just got to, like, oh, I will change my reality then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, my computer is good. Crashing once a day is fine. It's only one time. I just get off the computer when it crashes. It's, it's okay. Oh, yeah, By it's the way, time to go outside you, anyway. You can get Q6600s for five bucks. Oh, yeah. They're not worth anything now because they don't support modern instruction sets. But that's just crazy to me. I don't know. Yeah, we are we actually have a line of CPU fidget spinners coming. We're, <laughs> we're going to embed bearings in the middle of them. Like really high quality like ceramic or like hybrid ceramic bearings and turn CPUs into fidget spinners. We're going to put like an aluminum frame around the outside. We're still working on, on scaling production. Yeah, yeah. But there's a lot of CPUs out there. And hey, if they could be a fidget spinner instead of in a landfill, that's great, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So reuse. Let's go. Um, and yes, so cheap LG A775 CPUs if, are one of the main targets. If you were, yeah, if you were trying to go for like an XP era, like retro machine, there might be some hardware right now that would be like good to pick up. It's tough. Here's the problem. Once you get past about Vista, um, not only is the OS completely insecure to run connected to the internet, but there's basically nothing you can do on that computer anymore that doesn't require an internet connection. Yeah, I was gonna say, so a yeah. retro Windows 98 machine or something like that XP's can actually kind of the end. can actually still run a lot of software. You could fire up Encarta. For By the way, I found out recently WorldBook still publishes a, a, a printed encyclopedia. Yeah, uh, one of the writers on um, Ars Technica wrote a whole thing. They bought one. Um, <laughs> they asked for a review sample, got ignored, and then they actually bought one. And they were like, this is cool. And then his wife made him put it in another room because it was like ugly or something. Uh, anyway, the, it's a good article. I enjoyed <laughs> it. Uh, the point is you could fire up Encarta or you could play, you know, point and click interactive kids games or whatever, right? The software was intended to run locally on the machine. It was intended to never have anything to do with the internet. Exactly. The internet was an afterthought. Yeah. But by the time we hit Vista, especially Windows 7, there's basically nothing that does anything without some kind of online registration or activation or phone home um, or, or like multiplayer element or whatever it is without being connected to the internet. So this is going to become more and more of a problem over the next 5, 10, 50, 20 years oh, yeah. where you're going to be able... It's going to be a massive amount of lost history. Yeah, retro is going to become crystallized as this period of... You know, Windows 95 or Commodore or whatever to Windows XP. And then there's just going to be the missing times. That's it. Everything we experienced on our computers. Yeah, you'll just have to like emulate. Past that point, it's going to be like, you know, maybe like archive, like web archive. Or, shoot, archive.org or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's it. You'll be able to see stills of the the games people played at that time what those multiplayer maps looked like or whatever else it is right it's kind of sad yeah you know everything you're experiencing in fortnite right now your kids will never try they will never see it they'll be able to yeah it's unfortunate that you chose fortnite but it is what it is. Some people might want their kids to try <laughs> Fortnite. Remember, they're kids playing it now. Yeah. And that's what people have nostalgia for. I'm just messing around, but yeah. Yeah, I agree. I'm just messing around too. I know adults play Fortnite. Next next I judge next, them, but I know they do. Next merch message. <laughs> I think you should explain the concept and maybe show off some of the ways that they can send a merch message. Oh, ah. right. That's what we're supposed to do. Should we talk do. about the things? Yeah, we should the definitely things. talk about the things. The best way to interact with the show is, boom, through a merch message. Not super chats, not Twitch bits, none of that stuff. You want merch messages. All you got to do is go to lttstore.com and in the checkout... Cart. Crap! <laughs> in the cart... <laughs> 
if we're live, there will be a box where you can type a merch message. It'll either be responded to by our producer, Dan, or it'll show up down here if you just have a shout out for a friend or your mom or whoever else watches the WAN show. And occasionally, Dan will select one to curate and Luke and I will address your question on the show. Uh, That last one was an example of replying to a merch message. And Dan is about to give us one more. But first... I want to show you guys some pretty cool stuff. You can check out at lttstore.com. Ooh, we've got some really good stuff this week. Okay, that's the button-up shirt. Um, that was from either last week or a couple weeks ago. We've got the fleece-lined jacket. Is this a shirt? Is it a jacket? I don't know. You'll have to decide. And whoa, 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 what's this? Did we just get the Jerry Rig Everything Razor Knife back in stock? Yes, we did. And we have new colors. Now available in orange, along with black, is neon it, pink. Is it that screen? Green, clear, red, metal, all metal, and blue. Yeah. The, that, uh, that looks almost like yellow on there. It's much more orangey. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's not that representative of the color. So hopefully there's something we can do about that. It's like this. Yeah. It's, it's very orange. It's, it's like an LTT it's orange. It's like an LTT orange. Yes, yeah. that's exactly what it is. Uh, also this week, do you want the maroon one or the black one? Let's go with the maroon one. Okay. <laughs> maroon is your stoil. Thank you. I'm going to do the black one. Actually, I'm going to do a black one and a maroon one. Oh my. Available now in two colors. And all three of our awesome sizes that are all priced the same because, as I ranted about on the show last week, the costs are not actually that different. The big capacitor water bottle. It's huge. I personally think this was a particularly inspired design. Uh, I'm taking credit for this one. Sarah did a great job of bringing it to life with the, I think, perfect perfect pantone color does that not have just like an ugly capacitor look to it that's why i wanted the maroon one freaking love it there's lots of black caps too though yes yes so we've got it available in the 21 ounce the 40 ounce and of course the chungus 64 ounce Um, most of my life actually needing to fix capacitors i was working on these colored ones (laughs) We got people in float plane chat. It looks boring, to be honest. That's underwhelming. And then we've got the people that are like, oh my God, I need it. You, you wouldn't need it to be around. You know who you are. Yeah. The people who need one know who they are, and they've probably already ordered it. Nathan753, I fucking love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's one of those designs. It's polarizing. But you know what I've learned is that when it comes to design polarizing is actually good yeah think about it if 100 percent of the world thinks it's kind of okay nobody's gonna buy it but if 50 percent of the world thinks you it's just, crap you just sold your and 50 percent of the world thinks it's great you just sold four billion units yeah polarizing yeah it's good yeah and <laughs> I, if, I mean if you don't like it it's not like there isn't other bottle options right yeah exactly yeah Where, where's the joke the joke the polarizing. That was the joke. We were just doing it straight faced. Oh. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> Jeez. I got that reference. <laughs> oh, man. Love you, Dan. Uh, okay, want to hit us with another merch message? Sure, we got one more for you here. I'm buying Mysterious Combo because I have trouble making choices. Do you feel the same shopping for PC hardwares? There's too many options. I find that with laptops sometimes. Oh, yeah. I find laptops really overwhelming. There's so many variables, and it's really hard to quantify. Honestly, laptops are one of the ones that I'm looking at the the goals that we have for the lab, and I'm kind of going, this doesn't go far enough. Even if you have a, a compare feature that, you know, uses real empirical data, blah, 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 blah. It's too much to process. Yeah. It's too much. There's the display and the keyboard and the trackpad and the, the palm rejection of the trackpad and the size of the trackpad and the clickiness of the trackpad. And the if you're holding it like this, does it accidentally depress the trackpad? And if 
the thickness of the bezel. How much does that matter to you? The the weight versus the flexibility of it. There, it's really it's a really difficult challenge, and that even ignores the fact that every laptop body pretty much is available with literally, you know, anywhere from half a dozen to dozens of different internal hardware configurations. Which is going to change things. That can dramatically change everything that you're measuring about them. It's really tough. I don't yep. know the answer. Yep. Yep, I can see that. Desktops, I don't really have a hard time. Yeah, me to me, <laughs> desktops are kind of a... Um, it's something that I understand really well. Um, and from my point of view, once you get rid of the superfluous options there aren't really that many valid choices at a given price point. You know, if, Honestly, you're, yeah. if you're building a machine for about two grand, all right, what are my choices really? I'm either going Intel or AMD for CPU. I'm ideally not going for a top tier chipset so that I can save some money for my GPU. Oh, okay, that's another decision I need to make. Okay, how am I going NVIDIA or AMD for my GPU? I get the one that leaves me enough money for the amount of storage I need and the power supply I need. And then if I have any money left over, I spend it on a case. Otherwise I dumpster dive for one. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I built computers for most of my life. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Yeah. I have no issues with PC stuff. Sometimes I feel uh, uninspired in the in the pc space because like for a long time there it was like well if you don't want an rgb based everything uh there are no options uh and, and Whatever, i, I find sometimes off. the trends are just cry more a little well like it's just not interesting i guess know? but the the wood stuff that's a cool computer oh you liked that one yeah, yeah. i like it a lot to the point where i looked into getting my own and then I saw the prices on some things. The case is affordable. The The Fractal North is a beautiful case and at a very reasonable price point. Or and, It is a wonderful case. And you can also get that GPU water block for $500. Yeah. Yeah. That's where things get rough. That's where things it's, get pretty it's rough. The, the, the CPU and GPU water blocks and those fittings. Oh, my God. The fittings are <laughs> pretty cool. If you want to send it the whole way, it's really, really rough. I do think, though, like you made a comment um, uh, about how it's like more like partner friendly or like other person in the house that isn't just interested in computers friendly. Yeah, like my, my girlfriend's very into plants Yep, and green and stuff. It would perfectly fit in a very public space, which is not super common with computers. So I don't know. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right, why don't we do one more there, Dan? Sure. Sure thing. Let's see. Since you were able to travel again, what things did you realize you missed from trade shows, and what did you not miss? I missed seeing the people. I actually yeah. missed some of my uh, some of my old buds. I didn't manage to catch Cliff from MSI, unfortunately. Um, just trying to think. I did manage to run into. Um, I did manage to run into Walter from Seasonic, you know, just some of some of my 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 chums in the industry, uh, good old Tony from Silverstone. Yeah, there's, you know, there it was it was good to see people. Uh, we managed to have a dinner with uh, some creators, which was less on my hit list this time around, just because, like, how many of those people are going to be at LTX in a month? Yeah, like from that, that was, table. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm not. It was nice to hang out. I'm not like. I'm but not, it's not like you're not going to see them very soon. Yeah, I will see them very, very soon. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So that's pretty reasonable. That was really cool. Um, you miss the food. Definitely miss the food. There's lots of good food in Vancouver, but it's different, right? You know, you're yes. somewhere else. It kind of forces you out of your comfort zone. I'd say that's something. Uh, I played a lot of badminton while I was over there. <laughs> I missed that. Um, yeah, I'd say I'd say that's about it. It was. It's good energy, you know, at a trade show, like that feeling of accomplishment at the end of the day where you're like, yeah, we filmed like two LTTs today and it's a miracle either of them happened at all because so much went wrong and could have gone more wrong. Like that first day when we shot the video in the Gigabyte booth where we were talking about the Grace Super Chip and Grace Hopper, uh, we were supposed to be at a factory tour seeing a GPU production line. That just completely disintegrated um so we had to pivot and come up with something 
And it happened to be that Gigabyte had their booth kind of set up, but not so set up that I couldn't go in and start ripping things apart. It just it just worked out that way. Man, the number of people that watch a video like that and go, yeah, it's amazing how like scripted this is. <laughs> You got to just get the tinfoil hat off and you got to just take... (laughs) You're getting too good. You got to chillax. No, we actually showed up and we're like, hey, how about this? And they were like, uh, 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 uh. I love seeing his face when it boots. He's just like... Oh, that's the super micro one. Oh, no, I thought this was that framework. No, Gigabyte. I'm talking about Gigabyte. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Um, no, oh, yeah, we could talk about that one. Yeah, oh, man. Ugh, man, the number of people that thought we were sponsored by NVIDIA to do that video in the Gigabyte booth, NVIDIA wasn't <laughs> even there. They dropped off some stuff, ran away, I think, because they didn't want to answer any questions and potentially get in trouble, and then were just gone. They didn't pay anything. If, we, if they did, we would say it. Like, it is, it's hard to credibly come up with conspiracy theories about what we do. Because we're completely transparent. So whatever your conspiracy theory is, is stupid. <laughs> um, because if it was true, we would just tell you. For better or for worse, I say all kinds of stuff that I no sane business person oh, yeah. would say publicly. Yeah. Oh, man. Love it. Speaking of things that are stupid, uh, Google sells Google domains to Squarespace. Really? This is a major topic to you? It's okay, fine, fine, fine. Do you think? Do you think? Do you think? Do you think? All right. Google is shutting down Google domains and se- uh, selling its assets to Squarespace. Around 10 million domains will be transferred to Squarespace, after which Squarespace will honor renewal prices for 12 months. So they'll offer renewal, they'll honor renewal prices once. one time. Yes. Uh, this is likewise, uh, this will likewise affect Google Workspace accounts attached to Google domain as Squarespace will be taking over their billing and support services. Have no idea how that will go. That's going to be interesting. Uh, this is kind of pretty wacky uh, because a lot of people that I know host a lot of domains with Google domains because Google domains hosts a ton of top level domains. Cloudflare is, everyone loves to talk about how amazing Cloudflare is at at domain management because they are amazing. They sell it at like cost, very user-friendly, very easy to manage. You're probably doing your DNS junk there anyway. So like, why not have it all in one place? Like, yes, fantastic. Except they actually have pretty, what is this? Oh. Uh, they actually have pretty low support for a variety of top-level domains. Including... Why don't you talk about what support for top-level domains means? Okay, so uh, you guys are probably familiar with .com, but there's, you know, Never Twitch, heard of it. .tv. Uh, there's very potentially your your government websites, .co.uk for, for the, the British, um, Canada's the British. .ca. .tech, um, all there, kinds of there's, there's tons of them. They're all over the place. Those are top-level domains. Cloudflare doesn't support a bunch of them which is really does not support it does not support .ca for example so most of our .ca domains Hmm. are hosted with Google so we have to move them somewhere and there's there's some other good options but it's just like man the move for a long time was you have your Google Workspace stuff yeah you have your Cloudflare stuff you host Anything that can be, you have your domains that can be in Cloudflare, in Cloudflare, you just have them over there. And then your various ones that can't be in Cloudflare, they just all go in Google Workspace and it's fine. Everything's fine. This is the setup that like everyone that I know has been using or they just have everything in Google because they don't care about saving two bucks a month or two bucks a year or whatever, which is like fine. (sighs) It's also very interesting. Someone in, in Flowplane chat mentioned this. I was thinking about this earlier today. They dropped the .zip and .mov stuff on us and then just peaced out. <laughs> See ya. Have fun. <laughs> Jerks. But this is, this is actually going to make like a ton of work for a bunch of people. Because like uh, Squarespace is great, right? We use Squarespace for a bunch of different things, yada, yada, yada. But if you're not wanting to have a Squarespace site, for your domain? There's no real reason to use them. No. There's there's definitely reasons to use Squarespace. We use Squarespace, again. But not as your domain registrar. Yeah. 
And, and Squarespace having a domain registrar makes a ton of sense because especially if you're not super familiar with what you're doing, which makes sense, you might be using Squarespace because of that reason, being able to just get your domain in the process of setting up your Squarespace site is like perfect. Makes a ton of sense that they have this support. Yeah. But I don't necessarily want all of my domains shoved in there out well, of they, nowhere. They've had that support for a long time. I yeah, just, which is great. I just, uh... so basically what they're buying is recurring revenue. Essentially. They literally bought recurring revenue, which is just the like most amazing thing ever. I mean, look at the way that like, back music catalogs are being handled these days. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. You're just paying, you know, some multiplier of the recurring revenue and whoever is the rights holder is now just cashes out now and lives on a yacht or whatever, you know, it strikes their fancy. And then these, these, long game, large, and really they're just investment vehicles. These companies um, are building up this, this recurring revenue base that allows them you know, to eventually go IPO. It's like, it's a pretty common playbook when it comes to just IP acquisition companies. Um, it's, and it's pretty similar to what the plan was for the company that had offered to acquire us. So I get it. Um, there's all, oh man, there's so many, there's so many interesting, there's so many so interesting a, ways to just park money and, and just have it just sit and passively earn money for you. This, this is one of the things, the, the, the biggest thing that jumped out at me about this is not just that I'm annoyed that we were like actually standardizing and unifying our domains. Oh, I don't know. Two weeks ago. Um, and now we're gonna have to do it again, which is sick. Just a bunch of wasted time, but also We've been talking for a while about how you can't trust new Google products because they just keep shutting them down. This is not a new Google product. Yeah, they've been doing Google domains for, for over 10 years. a long time. When so now they... what can you trust from Google? And like what, what writing on the wall was there that they were going to do this? 10 years. Like they just launched new TLDs. The, the dot zip and dot mov thing like they were actually doing stuff in the space and then they i just... mean they were doing stuff in the stadia space and then yeah i mean but stadia just... was new and also terrible yeah but just because google's doing stuff is no indication that's, that that's they fair. might that's not fair. That's fair. immediately but kill like, it this it was it was good and they were like profiting off of it. like like cloudflare is doing it all at cost which is one of the reasons why everyone likes it so much google wasn't they were profiting off of it it doesn't seem like it's the hardest thing to do. I know nothing about it, but it doesn't seem like it's the hardest thing to do because tons of sites just spin it up as a part of their service package. So like, what's, what's the play here? I don't understand. And like, I'm sure I'm just miss, sorry. I'm sure I'm just missing something, but like, what, what do you do when Gmail uh, is killed? Yeah. I don't think Gmail's going anywhere. That's a lot of data that they can take from that. Um, is that it? There's no data they There's can no collect data from they it. Can take from it. So it's no longer core business, even though it's like an internet. You have like the address and phone number and contact information of all the domains because they they have a service that um, obfuscates all of that. But that means they have it on their end. Yeah, but that's not a lot of their kind of data. Yeah, for sure. That's boring data. That's like database. <laughs> that's. <laughs> it's just it's, it's really interesting to me, and this this is. This feels like an acceleration of a death spiral. Like they've been killing all these different products. This one dying. Okay, the, the point that you just made makes a lot more sense than anything I've heard so far. Of like, uh, okay, so yeah, it was literally just printing money, but not a ton of it. Yeah, and not as part of their core business. Yes. So maybe it's just that, but it, it feels very not strategic to me. But if that's the strategy maybe i don't know you'll allow it I, well i still hate it because i have more work to do now and that's not cool because i have a lot of work to do so does he <laughs> yeah, yeah well yeah yeah that might actually be his job <laughs> we'll see <laughs> uh maybe um all speaking right. of things that have changed for <laughs> no particular reason 
Intel just changed their processor uh. branding. This was reported by Ars Technica, Nantech, The Verge, basically everyone. Intel will be changing their processor branding with the launch of Meteor Lake later this year. They are officially dropping the I. That's right, my friends. It is no longer Core i5, Core i3. Now it is Core... Wait, what? Oh, I didn't even know about the non-ultra. Well, whatever. We've got Core 3, Core 5, Core 7, and Core Ultra 5, Core Ultra 7, Core Ultra 9. What happened to good old-fashioned good, better, best? <laughs> they are likewise dropping <sighs> any references to generations in their advertisements. Instead, adding this ultra tier to make it two tiers, core and core ultra, they will also shorten their numbering system by one digit and put the processor number after the word processor. What? What? So, what we had before... Act, this is worse than oh, I thought. Oh, whoa, yeah, I hate that. What we had before, Intel Core i9-10700K processor. Now... We have Intel Core Ultra Ooh. 9 processor 1070K. Ugh. I don't like that. That's weird. You know what it is, though, right? <laughs> and you know who I blame for this, right? No. I blame Apple. Oh. Have you ever tried to look up any information oh. on an Apple product? Yeah. But why? What's the benefit here? On an iPad. Have you ever tried to find out anything about a particular model of iPad? Just as a, as a normie who doesn't know that it's the late 2016 ver or, or whatever. And <laughs> I, I, they weren't the first to do it, but they popularized it in a way that has since seeped out into the rest of the tech industry. This, this habit of naming products in a way that is just infinitely less Google searchable than a clear and obvious product part number that indicates just f***ing anything about the product itself. And like I said, Apple's not by far not the only one to do it. You know, look at yeah. what Razer did with the blade. What the f*** is a Razer blade? I don't know. It could be anywhere from brand new and amazing to dog slow and garbage don't know the first time i ever had to work on a mac uh like i was trying to fix it and i was trying to figure out what version it was and i asked the person who owned it what it was and they had no idea i was immediately a little bit confused but then i asked them and they told me the like date and i was like that's a that's a season that's not a model like what what model of laptop do you have and they're just like uh, I just told you, I don't, I don't know. Omen. Yeah, it's just like, what? <laughs> oh, man. And you know what, you know what really is, like, truly infuriating? Even Apple's not consistent about it. With the iPhone, they're, like, the one product that they are more successful at than literally anything else. Actually super structured. They clearly denote what the crap it is. Because it's actually really f***ing important <laughs> to know that. And that but MacBook? I don't know. It's a MacBook. It's a Mac Pro. Oh, you don't know exactly what f***ing year your Mac Pro came out? Oh, I guess you're going to get information on the trash can one then. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just, it's asinine. Yeah. Yeah. Dropping the I for me, like, sure, it's, it's maybe more efficient. I kind of liked it, though. Look, they went it felt from Intel. I I liked that branding. They went from one ripped off naming scheme like <laughs> what what is i3 i5 i7? It's BMW. Yeah. And BMW probably stole it from someone else. But yeah. there there's no creativity here and then they've taken this thing that was already pretty stupid and then they've stupidified it more. Okay, so we we I mean, I guess removing a number is fine, but why do you need to say processor, then the, the model number? The processor move is the bad part. That's what I was trying to kind of get at. Like, I kind of liked the eye. I don't really care that it's gone. The processor move is really weird. And taking generational branding out of the 
out of the marketing basically just means to me that they've accepted that they can't keep up with producing new generations. So we're going to end up with this, this just soup of numbers and letters that are indecipherable unless you have a, a, like a legend and, and you can look up what exactly something is. I mean, it's, it's already awful because it used to be that i3, i5, i7, and this is partly because Intel didn't like innovate for a long time and didn't add higher core counts and stuff. But it, what, for a long time, i3, i5, i7 had a really clear meaning. i3 was a dual core. i5 was a quad core with, and didn't have hyper threading. And i7 was what definitely had hyper threading. And sometimes on mobile, it had fewer processors, but it represented kind of the best that they can do. And then they added core i9. And it's like, okay, fine. Then let's just keep going. You know, keep innovating, keep building better stuff and clearly indicate that this new thing is, is more better than the last one. But now you're just going to create an additional layer of confusion people for people where they go, yeah, well, it's a Core Ultra 9, so it's good, right? Well, I don't know. Which one is it? It's a Core Ultra 9 processor. What do you mean? What do you mean? You don't need the four digits at the end. And you know what? This isn't the only stupid branding thing Intel's done. I mean, I talked about this back when they did it, but rebranding their Xeons to bronze, silver, gold, platinum. What the crap was that? Because you know that no company ever wants to call something bronze or ever wants to call something I3. So they just create, they've created these ultra designations so that just everything can be ultra. No, I don't think they call I3s ultras. No, not I3s. I5s, I7s, and I9s are ultra. But that's what I mean. It's almost nothing's an I3 anymore anyway. They can be ultra? I don't know. I think I think Oh yeah, they can, can be. Yeah. Yeah. I think you have an i5 not ultra and an i5 ultra. What does that even mean? What does ultra mean? Do they say? I don't know. It's it's bad enough that I have to look at it. Like Xeons went from it being really clear what you were looking at to being utterly indecipherable. And I have to imagine whenever I see this these days that it's completely on purpose. You know, you look at the way that uh, you know, NVIDIA positioned particularly the generation that included both RTX and GTX cards, so the 20 series. Uh, you look at the way that the numbering worked, and you're just going like, this is ob this obviously was done to muddy the waters. I can't think of any reason other than that to do this. Um, and it just, it makes me mad because it makes this hobby less accessible. It makes it harder for people to understand exactly what it is that they're buying or down the line, maybe selling. Um, and I don't know, maybe I should, maybe the, the selfish part of me should be like, yeah, well, I should be thrilled that people will have no idea what their Ultra 9, you know, 14, whatever 12 is. Um, and, you know, that way maybe I can <laughs> snag a deal here and there. But it's like, I don't feel that way about it. I want, I want enthusiasm to be something that you don't have to study all the time. You should be able to take general rules that you've learned and apply them and still have a decent understanding five years later because there's some consistency there. Okay, so the number has gone up. This number's gone up by five, so we've moved forward by five generations, and this is has a similar positioning to that last one. Like if yeah. NVIDIA were to go and change the eight in their model numbers to mean anything other than, you know, the apex of their products, it would be really misleading to their customers. <laughs> and I would object to that. It's frustrating. <laughs> but you look how well it works. Now they can sell you a step down tier GPU for the same price that they used to give you a big die. And you'll take it and be happy about it. Well, you won't be happy about it. I, 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 I think NVIDIA has a PR problem right now. I mean, yeah, they're at an all-time high for valuation, but they're not liked. Um, I think they have some work to do, but I, I don't know how to fix it. I wonder if that new person will be able to help. GeForce side, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I feel I'll like be curious the, to see I feel if they like have the any GeForce ideas. side is going to determine the public opinion, though. That's fair. I mean, even if your consumer brand isn't driving the majority of your revenue anymore because you're so focused on the data center or automotive or whatever other kind of technology, most people are going to interact with your consumer-facing yeah. brands. 
It's a really good point. It's also a really good point that our sponsor made about their brand. <laughs> uh, Ridge. Where'd it go? Oh, yeah, there it is. No, that's not it. Dang it, where'd that wallet go? Ah, here we go. <clears throat> Thanks to the Ridge for sponsoring today's WAN show. Fa okay. Father's Day is coming up, but don't worry. There's a perfect gift for all the dads, daddies, and big papas in your oh, life. Oh, whoa. my God. In <laughs> yeah. your life. Meet the Ridge Wallet, the gear all the daddies need, including myself. Okay, can we really avoid the word daddies going forward? It's stylish, functional, and drop ready. Just like your dad carrying you and all oh, wow. your problems on his back. Oh, wow. The Ridge Wallet can easily carry up to 12 cards and cash, and it's available in a wide selection of colors and styles like carbon fiber and burnt Damascus. When it comes to the quality of their products, only the highest grade materials are used in their construction. And if you're skeptical, the Ridge offers a lifetime warranty to keep your mind at ease. Plus, their wallets are made with RFID blocking materials, so your information is protected. You can disappoint your dad any other time, but not on Father's Day. So head to the link in the video description and get your dad a Ridge wallet to be the favorite kid this Father's Day. Trust me, he'll thank you and maybe even slip you a little bit of extra allowance. Now, I have something special. That wallet you're holding right there. Oh. Oh, Ridge has given us that, and it, it is a special Ooh. LTX wallet. They're only going to make 20 of them. Oh, that's super cool. Hey, and, look, it's downtown Vancouver. Yeah. Ah, neat. And it's that serialized awesome. on the back. That's where the convention center is. That's where LTX is going to be. Yeah. Ooh, that is super cool. So what are we doing with them? Apparently, we're going to give them away at LTX. Oh, that's super cool. Okay. That's actually, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, we'll see you guys there. Yeah. Okay, I better not lose the special packaging for this and all that then okay all right we'll keep that safe thanks dan the show is also brought to you today by squarespace did you know that you can easily register your domain at squarespace now that they've acquired google's domains okay sorry <laughs> you can easily build a website even though you're not an it expert that's right squarespace is here to help you and your friends and your family and basically everyone. Whether you're a local business, a blogger, or an artist, Squarespace has a variety of customizable themes and templates. With just a couple of clicks, hey, voila, you just made a website. It's really good. Are you a genius or something? No, you're not, you're Dennis, sorry. And we know that because Squarespace <laughs> is what we use for our own website. If you already have a website, Squarespace makes it super simple to port your domain over and start using their customization and marketing tools to really stand out. Plus, with 24-7 support, you can get your problems solved anytime like some kind of genius. Start building your website today and receive 10% off your first purchase by visiting squarespace.com slash WAN. Finally, the show is brought to you by SignalWire. SignalWire can make your life easier, especially if you want to add SMS, voice, or video capabilities to your applications. You don't need to be a genius or even a daddy. SignalWire <laughs> is here to wire you up without the need to slog through complex code. That's right. Anyone can do it. SignalWire was first created by the team behind FreeSwitch, one of the world's largest open source communications platforms, and they make it simple to add features like interactive voice menus, call routing, speech recognition, and more. And if you're ever stuck, they provide 24-7 US-based support. So get a $25 credit with code WAN25 when you sign up at SignalWire.com slash WAN. You can use that credit to purchase phone numbers, build an interactive voice response, register messaging campaigns, or route phone numbers to your personal phone. What you can't use it for is to get a merch message. Dan, you want to hit us with a couple merch messages? Absolutely. I'll how are the uh, how are the water bottles doing? Oh, the really the restock the Jerry rig of knife. the Jerry Rig knife is winning today. I mean, the or the new orange one is pretty cool. You know, I don't actually know that people are going for the orange one. I'm gonna check. Hey, hold on, hold on. Okay, I want everyone to guess before I look it up. Most popular color. I want to hear people's guesses. Overall, so we've or got the over new the orange last, one. Like twenty four hours. Over, over the, over the Wan show. Orange, black, pink, green, clear, red, metal, which is actual metal, not the color of metal, hmm. and blue. Or, well, it's. I mean, other than the clear Man, one, they're all metal, I, but it's like raw metal. I really, I don't know if it's the TV or what, but I, I feel like we need new pictures of that because um, that looks yellow to me. Okay, well, it's orange. Yeah, it's it is color. definitely like standard LTT orange if you're viewing. Um, well, I should guess too before I look. 
Hmm. I feel like it's going to be orange. I'm sending it for orange. What do you think, Dan? I was leaning black for a second, but I'm going with orange. All right. I'm going to go with clear. I think clear is just you kind think clear, of... Even, even though it didn't just launch, you think it's still going to be the winner? Yeah, because we got a restock. Ah. Which I did say. You had all the information. Yep. <laughs> uh, is our Wi-Fi broken again? Because I can't load the dashboard. You could just Are you on five? I don't know. I mean, it shouldn't be considering your laptop is working. Mm. Yes, but I switched his laptop over. Ah, very fun. I see. I am going to go on mobile data, which is still not working. Hmm. This is interesting. Hmm. Scale issue. Uh, <laughs> wow. What a jerk. God, should we do a merch message while you do that? Sure. Okay, let's see what we got here. Maybe try to find one I can do. Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. Hey, LLD, but mostly Luke. Hey. With the progress being made in both LLMs and humanoid robots uh, yes, from Boston right. Dynamics, do you see real-life Westworld as a possibility in our lifetime? Have mm. you even ever seen Westworld? No. <laughs> you guys win. Orange is out in front by a country mile. Yeah. Got him. The yeah. safety orange, like Dan said. It's I was orange, thinking, like, metal, blue, clear, green, black, red, pink. Was it a restock of all colors? I have no idea. Mm. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, well, I've never seen Westworld. <laughs> okay. So uh, I don't know. Quick, um, quick synopsis. Theme park in like old and Western times. Real humans go to the theme park to pretend to be Westerns. But all the people in the, like, other people in the town are actually robots. And so you can shoot them and interact with them and, like, have storylines and relationships with these fake androids that behave and look like people. Got it. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Because he, really? said, he said our lifetimes. So, like, I don't know, like 50 years from now? Yeah, we'll probably have some robots. Yeah, but I don't think they're going to be realistic. In 50 years? How realistic is Westworld? I've never seen it. Well, I mean, they're just played by actors. So oh, is it? Very real. I mean, I assume I haven't seen it either, but that would be the cheapest way to do it. That's probably why they were so lifelike, because they were just literally people. Oh, no, you're a robot. Yeah. Oh, is that like a plot twist for the show or something? Or is that, No, no. Yeah. It's, it's oh. like shoot the it wrong was, person. It was new and like... They redid it in modern times, but it was, uh, I think it was originally done in like the 70s or 80s or something like that. So they didn't have CGI, but they wanted this cool sci-fi thing. So the premise was that they were robots. They were robots, but they were so realistic that they behaved like actors. I mean, people. Got it. Got it. I, I, I genuinely wouldn't be surprised if we were still stuck in Uncanny Valley to a certain degree. There's really small human things that are going to be really difficult to fully capture. Yeah, and uh, I think that by the time we have power sources and electronics that can be humanoid in a in a in a convincing way, um, we'll have probably all killed each other, or just like be gone. Our weapons will just be like amazing. Yeah, because I I don't see how you would reasonably power a device like that without some kind of nuclear power. Like I just I I I I, I don't. I, I don't understand. Does it have to keep running all the times? Yeah, like it, it, unless it unless it runs for more batteries. Than... Batteries would have to be a completely different thing. Yeah, because yeah, you could like different. charge while you're sleeping. That seems decently realistic. Sure, but you'd have to run for a day. Yeah, and unless you're unless you have some kind of you know fusion like, power totally, or something yeah. reactor inside and it fusion. I mean, look. <sighs> I was about to say, right now, a fusion reactor is the size of a room and barely works. And who could possibly imagine it being small enough That's to... That's the thing, because we're, talk we're talking on the scale of 50 years. Yeah. So I have no idea. I can't possibly know this answer. Who knows? Some whiz kid who isn't born yet is going to invent some crazy thing. Meanwhile, Twitch chat is going like solar roadways with the power solution come on guys <laughs> not actually they're saying like wireless charging but still i think mean, come on wireless charging is a maybe wireless charging is not a maybe you'd have to you'd have to put it everywhere 
How on earth are you going to do that? Mm. It's just 50 have, years, bro. You're just going to have microwave di- dish arrays everywhere? Yeah, I didn't think so. Well, uh, again, I haven't seen Westworld. <laughs> but, <laughs> but if you have, like, the bartender guy and he lives in the bar upstairs, if all the floor had pads in it, it could go through his feet or something, maybe. Yeah, it's it's a theme park. Leave it to the Imagineers at Disney. Let's go. Yeah. All right, fine. Yeah. Okay. I still think there's going to be Uncanny Valley issues or like, even if you somehow get past that, I, I think there's going to be things that can tip you off still, even on that type of a timeline. All right, hit us again. Okay. Hi, all. Will people be able to post reviews about products on the lab site? So it depends. Um, One of the concepts that we have for that is having some kind of hardcore user authentication so that you are a verified user. And then if there was a way for us to, I don't know if we'd be able to do it through an API or if we'd be able to do it some other way. But one of the things we'd obviously want to verify, aside from your you actual identity, which... I guess we you have to use a third party service for because I don't want to hold that data. That stuff exists. Uh, yeah, like uh, basically, I don't want randoms. I don't want I don't want anonymous reviews because it's too easy to game, and I would want the lab's website to be trusted. So whether it's trusted through your site reputation or whether it's trusted through some kind of verification of users, whether it's trusted through some kind of API access that we can negotiate to a new egg or something like that, where you can enter your new egg account credentials and it can pull products you've actually purchased so that we can we can pull them, you know, once a quarter or whatever to make sure that you didn't just return stuff, but we can we can verify that you actually purchased something, for example. You know, I don't know the right solution here, but in a perfect world, yes, we would take community feedback. I think where it'll start is people asking us to test things. And where it will go from there is finding ways for us to collect valid feedback about products from the community itself. And um We've had a lot of internal discussions about ways that we can do that in a scalable, cost-effective manner, and I don't think we've reached any kind of conclusion yet. Anything you wanted to add? No, not really. There's a lot of stuff with the lab that, like, it's tough, and there's a lot of ways to potentially do it, and we're not really sure which one's right. There's a lot of ways to potentially screw it up. Yeah. (laughs) Big true. One more. Okay. Hey, Linus, Bluetooth is frustrating. Do you foresee a technology... Agreed. Let's move on. Okay. okay. <laughs> no. Uh, do you foresee a technology that will replace or compete with Bluetooth, providing greater reliability and bandwidth for short-distance communications? I mean, a big part of the problem with Bluetooth is the software, though. Right? Like, it's the firmware on your device. It's the It's the software that's running on your devices. Like, I... Running AirPods on an iPhone, it's a really good experience. I was going to say, honestly, I don't think it's that bad. I think like you're kind of saying, I think it's implementations. I don't think Bluetooth itself is actually that bad, especially where we're currently at. There was older versions of Bluetooth that were kind of pretty bad, but it was also a very long time ago. There's definitely still jankiness. Like Switching between devices and stuff like that is not always handled properly. Yeah, but that's a very difficult thing to do. I, I know. I am, I'm not saying it's not. I'm just, I'm just saying there's definitely room for improvement. I think Bluetooth gets a lot more hate than it deserves, personally. I mean, there's a lot of... Uh, there's a, Man, there's... It's not like there haven't been competing standards. I mean, IR was a competing standard way back when. You would actually put your two devices next to each other so they have line of sight and they would send zeros and ones over the airwaves like uh, as light um which is was pretty wild um wi-fi direct looked like it was going to be a thing for a little bit yeah um and it might actually have been real and it is it does do things i mean wi-fi direct is how um you know android auto works with my car for example wireless android auto i believe the controllers the the um, first party NVIDIA controllers for the Shield used Wi Fi Direct, if I recall. No, maybe they didn't. I'm pretty sure their remote does, though. There are devices that do use Wi Fi Direct, um, but Bluetooth does a lot of things right. It does a yeah. pretty good job of 
of hopping onto a different frequency in order to uh, avoid um, interference. It has pretty okay range. 2.4 gigahertz is a great balance of throughput and range. Um, I don't see a ton of room for improvement there without a trade-off that I, th I think people would be pretty unhappy with. I really, I really, yeah. It, it uses so little power these days. It's, it's shocking. It's amazing. Um, Actually wild, the gains they've made in, in power reduction for Bluetooth. Bluetooth yeah. is good, man. I Yeah. It gets so much trash because... Uh, it's something that you actually interface with a lot. And a lot of these technologies, like, oh, you set up Wi-Fi on your phone for your house one time and then never do it again. Uh, like, there's a lot of stuff that's just constantly fine. And Bluetooth, you have to actually mess with often. Um, the latency is awful, though. Not always. Well, it's awful relative to a wire, but it's not awful relative to... A lot of other things that we could be using instead and we also have implementation problems here again which is where like yeah some devices and some setups have terrible latency with it and then you have others that have amazing latency yeah that are acceptable at the very least right yeah so i don't know you don't have to hate so much that's all i'm saying <laughs> unless it's about intel new branding then you go for it yeah all right. What do you want to talk about? Tell you what. How about let's play a game. Mm. I will give you three options, and you pick one. Okay. Trucking company tries to hire truck simulator players in game. Yes. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, you can, you can pick up. Trucking ones. company Schneider National is putting up virtual billboards in the game American Truck Simulator to try and recruit new employees. There is an ongoing driver shortage due primarily to the large number of baby boomers that have been retiring post-2020. But this is also at least partially due to the fact that the median truck driver in the United States makes just $48,000 a year. Some truck simulator players have reported liking the immersive quality of having real ads on in-game billboards. The ads, likewise, do not interrupt the regular flow of gameplay. Um, that is like the weirdest thing I've ever heard, but it seems kind of on brand for, <laughs> for the game. I don't know. Why not? Um, sure. Okay. Before we go any further, your thoughts. In-game job w w wanted for, ad for, for things that are similar to the game I, I, uh, I will say i like that it's actually not invasive like they put it on virtual billboards and what they mean by virtual billboards is billboards in the game that would have had fake ads now have real ads it's not like they put it in your face it, it's not like they did some new thing you're driving a truck in the game. There are billboards off the side of the highway. Now they have real ads. So you're on saying them. it might as well be a real ad. Honestly, in that case, like, sure, why not? I don't know. That doesn't really bother me. There was literally a fake ad. You're, there is there is no more ads. You didn't increase the amount of ads. So I like I don't really care. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't bother me. You already you literally already had an ad. If they started, like, you know how they have those real billboards in real life that, like, emit smells and stuff? What? There'll be, like, a billboard for a steakhouse, and it'll emit, like, a, a steak aroma when you're driving by so that you're hungry and you want to pull over and go to the steakhouse. No, this I'm is, not aware of this. This is a thing. Yeah. If, if they started, gravy. like... If they started, Delicious gravy. <laughs> Dan's just abandoning gravy? us. Is that gravy? <laughs> Can I have more Welch's, please? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, people are saying, what, huh? Yeah, okay, let me look this up. Uh, steak yeah, are you drunk? Billboard. I might be. Was it just a billboard in front of a steakhouse? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, no. If that's you find funny. yourself driving know, down River know. Highway in Mooresville, North Carolina this summer and suddenly smell a vaguely steak like odor, don't worry. You're not having a stroke. You're passing by the billboard for Bloom, a supermarket chain that is owned by Food Lion, and it emits the sound. 150 billboards waft odors of grilled steak towards the road in North Carolina. This is a thing. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, that makes perfect sense. So if they if they started going like too far for for it, uh, with it, so like the, what I'm saying right now is they're taking an ad that is fake and they're replacing it with an ad that is real. If that is as far as they go, then sure. If they end up making it so that like you have to, uh, oh, there's an achievement to like stare at the billboard. Yeah, or click on the the, the drive into it. Yeah, something I don't know. Okay, so in a simulation game, a realistic ad is Achievement. just being... Guess you won't get hired. Smash your truck into the actual advertisement for the actual trucking I mean, company. that sounds kind of funny. I would do it. It's kind of entertaining. I would probably do it too. But yeah, this but is why I'm... we would be bad trucking simulator gamers because we'd crash yeah, our trucks. Um, so, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, so there, then it's there's... like, psych, you crashed the truck. You're not hired. Yeah. <laughs> what, it, man, what would be kind of actually really cool... Oh man, I don't want to give people weird ideas. Maybe this would be sick though. If they had like a task that if you completed the task to a certain level of satisfaction, it just like sent off an application. <laughs> if you okay, so there's a there's like a salary baseline, but if you complete the task to a certain level of satisfaction in an uh, X amount of tries, you like get a signing bonus or something. <laughs> Is that dystopian? Is that terrible? I mean, my, my I don't brain's think... having fun with it, but I don't know if it's just like horrible or not. <laughs> I don't think the signing bonus is realistic, given that truckers are apparently only making just... median income of forty eight thousand dollars a year now. Yeah, it looks like a very unforgiving job. Like I seriously, thought, oh, very I, challenging. I always thought they made good money because of how rough it was. Uh, people in the chat are talking about how just the the trucking unions have been decimated. Because uh, um, like I knew when I was growing up, um, I did IT work for a trucker dude, and like he had money. Yeah, I don't know. This is one of those he things where it's money. like it's it's like we talked about a, a while back. The 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 labor shortage is right. In this case, fairly obvious what the labor shortage problem is. If you were actually paying. Adjusted for inflation, trucker wages today, like you were paying them back in the mid 90s, there would be no shortage of truckers. People would be like, I'm gonna drive a truck, let's go. Um, and that's not happening because you suck. Um, so get good, I guess. That's kind of all I have to say about that. Um, anyway. The next thing we wanted to talk about in line with this topic is, hey, this obviously isn't the first time that outside organizations have bought pseudo-physical ad space or product placements in video games. So so if trucker wages uh, from 1995 inflated in line to today, they should be making around like 80K, not 48. Yeah. So yeah, that lines up. Okay. <sighs> should we uh, should we have a look at some fun examples of in-game product placement, Luke? Yeah. I would like you to pick your favorite from the following. Favorite as in one that I actually think is okay, or favorite as in like, wow, that's egregious and I want to point it out? Um, I don't know. I guess either is fine. Um, so first up, the batteries that powered Alan Wake's flashlight were specifically Energizer batteries, while in... Pikmin, players must collect a giant Duracell battery in order to power their ship. Let's have a look at that. The, the Dur this one is pretty egregious. <laughs> that is fairly egregious. In the Japanese version of Splinter Cell, uh, which one is it? No, 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 hold on, hold on. Let me just, let me just get this right. Uh, in the Japanese version of Metal Gear Peace Walker, mm. there were Doritos and Mountain Dew available as pickups <laughs> amazing i actually kind of like this one <laughs> they're mean. so giant <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's misrepresentative how, how small I'm, is solid snake yeah i've never seen it i've never seen a thing of doritos that big <laughs> enter the matrix had a somewhat out of place powerade vending machine in the game <laughs> if if it's not like a core consumable in the game or something, I don't really care about that. It seems fine to me. Like, is, is there really value to me in them like making some generic fake logo compared to it just being an actual logo? I don't really care. Mm -hmm. 
I really like this next one. Um, splinter Cell Chaos Theory. Well, okay, I don't have to explain this one, really. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> it was a product of its time. Yep. <laughs> Why don't we just put it that way? And then this is a this is a big one. I oh, didn't know about this. Obama's two presidential campaigns both bought billboard space in games including Guitar Hero 3, Madden NFL, NBA Live, and Burnout Paradise. <laughs> so, which is your favorite? What do you, what does it what does this mean? Um um, I th- I think the solid snake one. I'm assuming they like heal you when you pick them up, and it, rem- it reminds me of like wall chicken from uh, wow Castlevania. So neat. I'm down with it. I actually kind of like the Duracell battery. <laughs> oh, I hate power that one. of the ship. Yeah, it's it's awful. Yeah. It's like. That one's like, it's like, I don't know why, I don't understand why my brain hates that one more than the random Doritos. Yeah, I don't understand like that the either. the same thing. I hate the Axe one the most. That one's just not cool. Like, the Obama one's like, oh, this is, like, interesting, right? Like, yeah. politics and, and the world is changing and evolving. The Powerade one just doesn't matter at all. The Doritos one is funny. The, the Duracell, Duracell one? one is... It's a... It's like it's it's it's, like too much. it's a novelty sized battery. It's just it's stupid. Yeah, it's, I don't know. Just, and the Axe one's just like lame. I don't know. Yeah, brands have also released sponsored games, infamously Pepsi Man and Burger King's Sneak yeah, King. Pepsi Man is awesome. But also the U.S. Army's 2002 FPS mm. America's Army, which was distributed as a free download for PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. The Army actually released eight titles in the series, including versions for mobile and arcade. The last title in the series, America's Army Proving Grounds, was released in 2013 and ended support in 2022. That is a major a support window. campaign. Uh, the military also created an esports team in 2018 and still using uses gaming platforms as a major part of its recruiting strategy. So this is this is sort of on topic just because it brings us back around from in-game placements yeah. to in game or in gaming um job recruitment essentially uh the army's esports team used to have its own twitch channel but they left the platform after being heckled by viewers over alleged war crimes and engaging in fake giveaways uh the military has apparently earmarked millions for investing in gaming related partnerships including one million specifically for advertising on twitch which was a source of recent controversy. Oh, I guess they can solve that problem by going to kick. No one will care. Easy. Solution solved. Thank you for that. That's very helpful. Um, Got it. So, okay. What if it was an army recruitment billboard? Would you feel any differently about it compared to a um, Schneider National recruitment billboard? Well, if it was like an army recruitment billboard... Uh, in the tra- in track simulator. In... See that's that's the that's the that's the thing that catches me is I think it's like actually sort of cool that there's a trucking hiring ad in a trucking game. Hmm. Do I still think it's cool if there's an America's Army recruitment ad in COD? Probably not. Why? I don't know. I'm asking myself this and I don't know. But I also don't think I would personally care. Like if there was, if you're, if you're gunning down some highway, uh, quite literally, I guess in this case, um, in, in COD and there's a billboard for <laughs> uncle Sam, like, I don't really care. Hey, actually that's an interesting one. There are a ton of shooter games with literal uncle, uncle Sam sign like posters on them. So this is actually a thing that has happened. And I think the whole world has just not cared. So I don't know. Because the like, we want you, Uncle Sam poster is genuinely in tons of games. Yeah, so I don't know. I'm sure someone hates that deeply. I just oh yeah, Chad is is you know, um, pretty clear that for them the difference is that trucking is nonviolent. Yeah. So what you're recruiting people to do is 
drive a truck. Yeah. Deliver goods. I think um, that's yeah. Rather than delivering bullets. Um which to be clear, I I won't deny that there are legitimate reasons to do. Uh but I think that it would be naive for people to say that they are always delivered for legitimate reasons. Yeah. Uh which is <laughs> a challenge. <laughs> um all right. Yeah. Why don't we talk about Comcast fighting fee transparency? Yes, yeah, so I don't know anything about this. Comcast has complained to the FCC. Oh, great. Yeah, about bas- an- basically ISPs are dicks. Yeah, just yeah, always. The sequel. The yeah. sequel of the sequel. Here we go. <laughs> Number two. Uh, Comcast has complained to the FCC about an upcoming rules change that will require them to clearly disclose their prices and monthly fees on broadband facts labels in an itemized list intended to be analogous to nutrition facts labels found on packaged food? What is happening right now? According to Comcast, displaying all their monthly fees will impose significant administrative burdens and unnecessary complexity? How? How bad are you? What do you mean? Having a product label is hard. Uh, is what I just read, I think. Uh, The new rules are in response to a 2021 law passed by uh, Congress uh, and passed by Congress and requires, there we go, requiring ISPs to display the labels at a point of sale. (laughs) The labels must disclose broadband prices, introductory rates, data allowances, internet speeds, and include links to information about an ISP's network management practices and privacy policies. This is great. That all great. sounds fantastic. This is actually what the government is supposed to be doing. I so far love this. According to Comcast, though, it is working diligently to put in place the systems and processes necessary to create, maintain, and display the labels as required. However, it and other large ASPs must take issue with the part of the new rules that states that providers must list all recurring monthly fees, including all charges that providers impose at their discretion, i.e. charges not mandated by a government. What? That, that is over the line! You can't have us tell people what will charge them. This is the most ridiculous crap I've read in a long time. According to Comcast, the wording of the rules is ambiguous. No, it's not. It doesn't seem like to me. Because, because, okay, some government fees are not required to be passed on to customers, but can be passed through to customers at an ISP's discretion. So they will have to admit that they don't have to pass the fees to customer. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. These discretionary pass-through fees vary from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, and ISPs would therefore need to have the different label for each jurisdiction. 251 in total, according to Comcast. Oh, no. No, you actually do just need to have transparency in your fees, and I'm sorry, but like, okay, for an organization our size, yes, all the different tax jurisdictions in the States are a nightmare. That's also a lot more than 251, as far as my understanding goes. Um... For an organization your size Get that it done. has to do all these things and has to deal with all these fees, listing them shouldn't be much of a challenge. Yeah. And this isn't the first time that we've heard corporate whining about this type of transparency. The food industry made similar complaints of regulatory overburden and potential customer confusion when nutrition labels were first implemented. Um, in 2003, the FTA began requiring labeling of trans fats. And by 2015, the food industry had reduced their trans fat content in food by 86%. So that's an example of how it actually works for the benefit of consumers when the government steps in and goes, hey, actually, that thing that you've been doing is totally unethical and not okay, and you're obviously going to keep doing it because it's very profitable to keep doing it, but you do need to stop. There are times when that does make sense. I, I, I have a problem with TELUS right now. Um, where I have a recurring billing set up with TELUS for my internet and they just won't bill me and then they charge me late fees and interest. And I'm like, what do you mean? It's set to recurring billing. You have my card. Charge it? And they're just like, nope, late interest. What are you doing? 
I was I was literally considering the other day, like if I want to be petty enough to just like bring them to small claims court. It's because like there is literally no way that they can win this. It's like four dollars, but like what? Like I just I can't imagine at any level how they think this is okay. It's just so I it's just ISPs, dude. Again, I can't figure this is it out. Why you need regulation sometimes? And I, here here's another example. Uh, Comcast has repeatedly had issues with customer service reps giving misleading information to customers, which is, so basically they're saying, we don't want to create any documentation, not even anything people can use internally, because then people might accidentally tell people the right information. Yeah. Also, they were caught lying to the FCC about how much of the country they actually cover this past February, apparently. <laughs> yeah, uh, ISPs are the classic example. Like, if you're going to, if you're going to use public infrastructure, then you need public regulation. I'm sorry, that's just the way it works, because you're only sort of a private entity. You're a private-public partnership. So you, you are, yeah, I'm sorry. You're subject to rules. I'm sorry you didn't make enough billions of dollars last quarter in your stupid monopoly. Like, no, you actually do need to tell people how much money you're going to charge them. It's very frustrating. Oh, you know what else is frustrating? We urgently need applicants for the following jobs. Please apply on the LinusTechTips.com. No, wait, no. LinusMediaGroup.com website. <laughs> I, a standards and compliance specialist for Creator Warehouse. Responsibilities include ensuring that our goods and products meet compliance standards by setting and main, managing expectations with suppliers, pursuing and maintaining intellectual rights properties such as patents, copyrights, and trademarks, along with ensuring compliance with consumer regulations. It's mostly the compliance stuff. We also need a social media coordinator. Responsibilities include community engagement, memes, producing short form video for social media and producing exclusive content for Floatplane and a writer kind of slash producer, mostly writer. We're looking for knowledge of PC hardware product lines, generations and industry context, along with strong English writing skills. So you guys can apply over at linusmediagroup.com. What else do you want to talk about? Oh, wait, is it already when after dark? We haven't even talked about the Reddit API protests and the we fact that literally of all of Turkey was hacked. Yeah, that one's brutal. And the fact that Cyberpunk... Okay, I want to talk about this. Cyberpunk 2077 increased their system requirements. CD Projekt Red has announced that the recommended and minimum system requirements for Cyberpunk 2077 will be increasing with the September arrival of its upcoming... Upcoming? Upcoming <laughs> Phantom Liberty expansion, which is going to be 30 bucks. It will also be dropping support for hard drives... Though, players with hard drives and the previous minimum settings should still be able to play. CD Projekt said, The reason for making these changes is that updating the requirements is an important part of the game improvement process and of enhancing and adding new features. So let's have a look here. Uh, oh, shoot. I only have the new minimum yeah, requirements. I don't have the, to the old one. That's a bummer. But anyway, here are, the, the here are the new minimum requirements. So in-game graphics low Core i7 6000 series or first-gen Ryzen GTX 1060 or RX 580. Okay, 6 gigs VRAM, 12 gigs RAM. Uh, yeah, okay. Recommended is now 12th gen core and a seventh, excuse me, sorry, Ryzen 7000? Wow. I mean, I expected the GPU, but my goodness. And uh, ray tracing. Well, yeah, okay, obviously this is good. Okay, this is just stupid. Oh, this website is horrible. You do um, not need to go from a 7800X to a 7900X to enable ray tracing. <laughs> Anywho. Yeah, not, that's fair. This is fair. Um, Original minimum was a i5-3570K or okay. an AMD FX8310. And original recommended was i7-4790 or AMD Ryzen 3 3200G. This is a big upgrade. I want to talk about this because I can't actually remember too many examples of this happening. Now, there are the obvious like... ones. World of Warcraft, for example, saw significant graphical fidelity updates. Okay. But that's a game as a service. Yeah. I can't think of any uh, buy it once game that has ever had a requirements bump. I think there's got to be 
a ton of game as a service examples, tons of different MMOs, tons of different, like, I wouldn't be surprised if a world of uh, tanks. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if a game like that, which has been around for a long time now, wouldn't be surprised if they had a bump at some point in time. Um, but yeah. this is bizarre, right? Yeah. Like, taking a game that someone bought and then going, yeah, we we updated it. Sorry, not sorry. Um, it might not, like, run properly anymore. This and would bother me a lot less if you could be selective about the patch. Yeah. Oh, man. Patch... Force patches have been driving me absolutely crazy. I swear to you, Beat Games is determined to kill the modding scene for Beat Saber. They just issue pointless patch after pointless patch that just barely affects gameplay, but breaks all the mods. And we know they don't have to because they've added content packs in the past that don't break all the mods. And I know that mods aren't officially supported and blah, blah, blah. You know, Beat Games at least isn't, you know, going after modders and shutting them down, which I guess technically they could do. But they put a ton of burden on on mod developers with their just like constant tiny change, tiny change, tiny change. Tiny... No, 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 no. Just leave it the f*** alone. <laughs> Add a few content packs and do a big patch every six months or whatever. That, nobody is asking for what you're doing. So anyway, so same thing here. Yeah, if you had the ability to just install off the discs and run the original co copy of the game, then that would be a completely different situation. And like, I, I don't, I don't, I feel like I'm coming across very amped up and angry right now. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to complain about upgrading the product, right? They, 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 they're making it like more juicier so yeah. that's cool i guess but also man it's a super weird precedent right there's a there's a bunch of people in chat giving out examples of games that have done this but it's all yeah mmos games as a service uh, someone pointed out eve online yeah that game is like ancient well, yeah that would have to be updated at some point you would like actually have to because the original minimum specs would have been like operating Pentium systems 3. that aren't secure anymore and stuff like like there yeah a lot of these subscription games definitely have had it happen but i yeah i don't know it's interesting i'm sure there are examples of games that have had this happen uh but i bet you it's been more of a understandable requirement type of thing like hey this certain operating system that was originally listed at as a minimum spec is no is now end of life satisfactory you know? apparently just did it recently that's interesting yeah huh okay people are talking about texture packs and stuff i'm not talking about modding though like there's a crisis 2 texture pack that someone brought up i'm talking about the base game actually changing automatically updating and then you being forced to play it but maybe not necessarily the, being able to play it very well the anymore. texture pack might not be a mod but it's still an option um yeah, Minecraft for sure. That lines up. I bet you that happened. Wouldn't be surprised. I could see that affecting people a lot more than something like a Cyberpunk yeah. where people already were realistically buying a pretty decent computer if they wanted to run it half decently at all. Yeah, I wonder if I can find it. Minecraft. Top original. Gear 1224 asks if my Taycan is fixed slash has a repaired battery. No. Owned. They apparently actually do have the replacement part now, but it has been almost two months of not having that car. That's crazy. You know what car still works? Your Acura? Yeah. Yeah, I know. That's nuts. You know what car has literally like always worked? What? The Acura? <laughs> crazy. <laughs> yeah. I, you smiled when you tried launch control. It was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's true. You know what car can launch right now? <laughs> not your Acura maybe not that fast but it could do it <laughs> I mean I guess got him <laughs> it all depends what you consider launching <laughs> hey it's a comfy couch on wheels I'm okay with it um, man I can't I'm having a hard time finding like the actual uh, original I did eventually get a courtesy car it took a couple of weeks but I do have a courtesy car and the courtesy car did not probably have whatever the desired effect was because Yvonne and I were considering uh, McCann for her. She's always wanted an SUV. And it's like, I got the cool new car. I was like, oh, maybe we should probably get you something um, other than, you know, a minivan. And um, <laughs> we both absolutely hate the McCann. Just the interior is just 
cluttered. Um, the stupid, the visor. It doesn't come far enough, and you just get sun in your eyes if it's coming in from the oh, side. Oh, wait, so this, like, almost, like, denied them a purchase. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> we're still going to check out the all-electric one when it comes, but it, this is not this is not a good showing for it. Oof. Uh, the gearing is really funky, which obviously wouldn't affect an electric one. Like, it'll it'll go from first to... It'll, it'll stay in first up to, like, 18 kilometers an hour, and then by the time you're going, like, 42, it's in fourth. So it's, like, really lurchy. Um, it's, it's like, it's not how I would shift and it has paddles, but why do I, what year is it? I've, I don't, I've, why do I have to use paddles? Like, give me a proper manual transmission. Sure. Yeah. I'm good with that. Oops. Punch my phone. Uh, I'm good with that, but I don't, I don't want to dink around with stupid paddles. Um, original Minecraft specs, or at, at least as, as close as I can get to it, which is very likely not actually original, but pretty close. Intel P4 or it's AMD equivalent, two gigs of RAM, Intel uh, for GPU, Intel GMA 950, or AMD equivalent, and at least 90 megabytes of hard drive space. That's minimum specs. Okay, well, that's definitely not the case anymore. <laughs> yeah. Recommended specs was an Intel Pentium D or AMD Athlon 64, uh, four gigs of RAM, and a GeForce 6000 series, or ATI Radeon 9000 series with 150 megabytes of hard drive space. Sorry, I'm just looking at the modern requirements. They're still pretty light, actually. I wouldn't uh, expect them to be too crazy, but... Core i3, 3210. Yeah, or like... This the man. These are these are friggin' slow. These yeah, things. Yeah, that's not great. Two gigs RAM. Yeah, I mean. Intel. So wait, the RAM the RAM requirement has never changed. Yeah. Minimum RAM requirement has always been two gigs. You need a minimum of one gigabyte of hard drive space. That's a lot more. It was originally ninety megs. Oh, okay. That's that's fair. GeForce four hundred series or Radeon seven thousand. That's also a decent jump considering. The recommended was originally a GeForce 6000 series. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a big jump. Yeah. Yeah, like a, a 40 uh, or a 460 is a lot of GPU compared to like <laughs> a 6600 <laughs> GT or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there are definitely precedents for this, but uh, I, maybe part of it is that it feels like it happened really fast. Yes. It's, yeah. This is like, came out like two, three years ago, right? <clears throat> Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't necessarily feel like, um, like with Minecraft, it's like it kind of evolved with what is effectively a minimum spec computer. Mm -hmm. Like if, if you even had the original minimum spec of a Minecraft computer around, I'd be like very surprised if it was still working. Um, but the Cyberpunk one, like the original min spec, is still a pretty decent computer. I don't know. And this is a good point. You can still play older versions of Minecraft. Yeah. With Cyberpunk, you're locked out. Mind you, it's been brought up that GOG apparently manages previous versions a little bit better. So I don't actually know for sure that you won't be able to play an older version of Cyberpunk. Maybe that's something that will require yeah, some kind of okay. investigation. If that's possible, then this is cool. All right. There's a couple more things I want to do real quick before we do when after dark. Uh, I'd like to talk about the Reddit API protests that have caused site instability. Yeah. Uh, Reddit crashed for three hours on Monday after over 8,000 subreddits switched to private or read-only mode in protest of the platform's new API fees. On Tuesday, Reddit CEO Steve Huffman sent out a company-wide memo downplaying the user protest. Talk about poking the bear just utterly unnecessarily. because yeah, you know that's going to leak. It leaked to The Verge shortly after because of course it did, and Huffman claimed in the memo that the blackout hadn't had any significant revenue impact and that he anticipates that it'll all the subreddits will return by Wednesday and everything will be fine. because they don't make any money. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> currently, around 5,000 subreddits are still private or locked. Huffman also warned employees to be mindful of wearing Reddit gear in public. Uh, that is kind of stupid and fear -mongery. I don't think anyone was mad at like the average random Reddit employee. People are mad at him, specifically. Like, it's not f Reddit employees, it's f slash you slash spez. Like, it's not, it's, it's pretty specific where the hate is concentrated right now. Um, Huffman has made some pretty 
odd claims in the last few weeks, um, including apparently saying that the developer for the Apollo app tried to blackmail Reddit and telling a journalist from The Verge that the developer for the RIF app refused to talk with Reddit. Both developers have shared their past communications with Reddit, refuting these claims. The site suffered another significant outage on Thursday afternoon, and Reddit sent a message to several moderators attempting to solicit mods who are willing to work with them to overthrow their fellow moderators and reopen the subreddits. Um, they seem to be getting... For, for a company that's cool as a cucumber, this is not affecting our revenue, they're resorting to some pretty weird, desperate stuff. Uh, there was also a post in the Floatplane chat from Nicholas... Have you heard about Reddit restoring deleted comments of users who are leaving the platform as a way to ensure that if you leave and delete all your content as an act of protest, they will still keep the value of everything you posted? Like, okay, here's a take that people maybe don't want to hear. I'm really surprised they haven't been way more drastic about this. Very, very surprised. Like I'd they, be freaking out. It's pretty clear. If anyone knows how to, like, raise a storm online, it's Reddit. Oh, yeah. And they sure did it. Which, yeah, you probably should have expected them to do because you're absolutely right. Um, like, look at Wall Street bets. They, like, they brought down giant investment for it. Like, that was all done on Reddit. These are, these are the people, you know? But the, what is surprising to me is that they haven't taken a way more ham-fisted approach and just been like, no. We have no, disabled. Your sub is actually open. Yeah, we have disabled the yeah. ability for subs that, at this date, were open to be closed right now. And maybe you make it so that newly created subs can be created in a private state, but you can't make, uh, uh like uh, subreddits with a certain amount of subscribers to them that were public. You can no longer make them private or something. I'm sur very surprised they haven't done that. Um, someone in Floatplane chat said restoring comments runs afoul of multiple cyber privacy laws. Yeah, absolutely. Like this is, this is going to be a huge problem for them. Um, yep. I've already ran into an issue. I Googled the answer to a problem I was having and it ran me into a private subreddit. That yep. sucked a lot. That was annoying. But I think it's kind of necessary. I'm I'm solidly on the side of the developers. Uh, Reddit has not engaged in the, with them in good faith. Developers and, as in that's going to get confusing. Developers as in the Reddit is fun and Apollo developers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So ba basically, the developers of tools that relied on Reddit acting in good faith, who are now screwed over because Reddit did not act in good faith. Uh, what Reddit's doing is legal. But legal is the absolute bare minimum. If you have integrity, then you should you should act in good faith. And Reddit hasn't. They've they've lied. They've obscured. They have. Um... Yeah, like there's there is absolutely ways that they could have worked with these apps to be sustainable to keep yeah. everybody sustainable. Because if if they if they just appealed to people and they were like, hey. This is the problem. These Reddit's are, not making money. These are real numbers. The alternative is we shut down. How do we work together to solve this? Yeah. That's a totally different situation, but it's obviously not what happened. I feel like they could have taken this insanely powerful, often chaotic force that is the Reddit user base and actually... Harnessed it. Yeah. Instead of just uh, poking the bear as hard as you possibly can. Like, this whole thing just feels incredibly poorly thought out and planned and executed and everything else so naturally dumb. reddit users have come up with creative new ways to protest r slash picks a community with 30 million subscribers has decided that henceforth all images will be of john oliver looking sexy <laughs> That is so random and so Reddit-like. Hilarious. So what, just everything posted here that isn't that just gets deleted? Or, or like... Apparently. Very funny. <laughs> very, very funny. Oh man, that's hilarious. Alrighty then. Apparently GIFs did it too. Makes sense to me. Is Kick.com back yet? <laughs> oh. Oh. I I saw it start to load in, and I switched to my screen, and it, it was not. Oh, my God. 
r slash gifts has been renamed to gifts of john oliver um, oh my god and it's just it's it's, it's gifts of john oliver yep yeah. perfect amazing amazing that's it all right <laughs> frankly i like it better now <laughs> i'm Improved. gonna spend more time on reddit <laughs> Good gravy. There's a lot of merch messages. Dan, what have you done? Why did you send so many merch messages? Yeah, Dan. I'm just trying to keep this company afloat. <laughs> afloat plane. Hey. Uh, very good. Uh, is there more stuff to go over? Turkey? Ah, uh, nah. Uh, I think that's it then. I think Turkey was the last one. Rockstar removed a bunch of vehicles from Grand Theft Auto Online. Oh, yeah, and they put them in some paid thing. Yeah, they said they were lesser-used vehicles to streamline the browsing experience for the shop. So players were surprised to find that 27% of the game's vehicle section was removed, including popular cars like the Comet SR, and then that many of the cut cars have instead been rolled into a GTA Plus subscriber-exclusive store. Lol, got em. GTA Plus is not available on PC or legacy consoles, only PS5 and Xbox Series X and S. Players who had already bought one of the cars will be able to keep it, and players can also spin the game's lucky wheel once every 24 hours for a chance to win the newly paywalled cars. Rockstar also said that some of the removed cars might be available as part of future events. This is terrible. Yeah, that's all I really have to say about that. I think we can all agree that Rockstar sucks. For this, they do other stuff that's good, but this sucks objectively and if you think it doesn't suck you're wrong yep happy to help all right when show after dark let's go he's doing it he's on it i'm gonna beat him over there oh crap oh you didn't even try i uh, i feel like you would have won if you, you just didn't dedicated even try. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if he knows how to set it correctly Does he know the number, though? And I helped. Thank you, Linus. Someone in Floatplane Chat said, I've graduated middle school, high school, and college since GTA 5 came out. <laughs> <laughs> there's, yeah, I don't know if there's going to be any merch messages about it, but I am uh, fully engaged on the hype train for a game right now in a way that I don't think I have been in, like... Starfield. Yeah. I knew it. Dude. I'm so excited. How can you let oh yourself get caught up in that? I believe his lies! Okay? Me too, oh, but I'm not going to try and admit it to myself. I don't care. I'm so stoked. I've been you. hurt it so many so times. Cool. What? With what? This is, this is something that I genuinely... I have honestly very often been very confused about the hate for Bethesda. No, there not are just some Bethesda. Things, 76, just in general. Ridiculous. There's a bunch of things. But when you hate the Elder mainline Scrolls games, Online. Is there hate for that? Elder Scrolls Online? Yeah, is there hate for that? Uh, didn't it just suck? You complained about oh, it Oh, I me. didn't like the game. But well, okay. Wait, 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 wait. For their mainline games. Literally my games. primary source about how much <laughs> butt it sucked. <laughs> for their mainline games. Yeah, horse armor. Yeah, yeah. We have Bethesda but, to blame. But Oblivion they was a good game. They started it. But Oblivion was a good game. I mean, Oblivion was a great game. It was a very good Fantastic game. Fantastic game. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Amazing game. Fallout 4. Did not like it as much as Fallout 3. Fallout 4. Okay. Amazing game. Still an amazing game. Even though I didn't like it as much as 3. I didn't like it as much as Vegas either. Vegas was fantastic. Okay. I think it's going to be great. Okay. Yeah. You know what game I have not been enjoying? Tears of the Kingdom. Really? I've only just started the building mechanics and stuff. I'm still on like the starting island and stuff. Uh, but but I've, I mean, I've put a couple hours into it. Man, the way that, the way that Breath of the Wild just sucked me in, uh, it's, it's just not there. But then I think part of it was what I talked to about before, where Breath of the Wild was an amazing experience and a wonderful world to explore. And I, I, 
dug around and climbed around and, and you like completed. And then I was done. Yeah. And then expansion content came out and I went, no, nah. no, yeah. no, I think I have, that I think book I have was closed. I think I have done this and that's fine. And then tears of the kingdom came out and there's tons of cool stuff in it. And I, you know, my news feed because I was following it up till the release is still full of people who are building you know, functioning cars out of, you know, pots and stuff like that or whatever. In and I'm Starfield, like, Starfield, you that, can build your own spaceship. And it's like, that sounds really cool, but I don't have time for that. Mm. And other than that, this is Breath of the Wild. And for me, I don't have time to play every game. So if I only have time to play some games, it's going to be hockey. Do I play Breath of the Wild 2 or do I play Slapshot Rebound? Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> something different a new experience <laughs> the best most accurate hockey simulator of all time uh, yeah. also known as Slapshot rebound luke and i have been a little bit enamored with this game lately it is really 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 frustrating it's very hard <laughs> it's kind of great though um to be clear, I'm not saying that Tears of the Kingdom is a bad game by any stretch of the imagination. When I say that a game is Breath of the Wild, but like better and more and whatever, expanded, Breath of the Wild is, if I'm being honest with myself, probably my favorite game of all time. I just completed it. Yeah. And that's okay. You can just be done with things. Yeah. Like there's, um, there's a bunch of stuff like that. I don't know. That's fine. Please remind your user base to not pre-order. I mean, sure, it just doesn't matter. There, there's no like. <sighs> Don't be jaded. I, I, like I, that. I will be less defeated some other day, and I'm sure I'll I'll yeah. champion it more. But there's the like. Don't buy mi microtransactions in games because you will literally ruin an entire section of gaming called mobile gaming if you do so. And the Everybody whole internet's it. just not going to care at all. Diablo Immortal's going to come out. And we're all going to be like, hey, don't buy any of the microtransactions. And then they'll make tens of millions of dollars a day because people will be like, no, screw you. I'm going to burn my money. Like, I just so at a certain point, it's like, okay, don't, don't, don't pre-order. Ha ha ha. They're going to do it anyways. They don't care. What's the point? I don't know what would disappoint me more. If my kids bought a microtransaction or brought home like a dumb SO. <laughs> I want them to not be shallow. It's not. How do you, you know. define how do you define um microtransaction? I, I mean okay. I, I should I should clarify. I think for a free to play game where we're talking cosmetic benefits and you spend a reasonable box game price on some stuff that you think is kind of cool or whatever you know it's your money sure i've done i've done developer supporting microtransactions for sure however however there there's i think that while the line is blurry there's certainly areas that are clearly over it where we've gone past what makes sense and what is reasonable and into what doesn't make sense and isn't reasonable yeah yeah, like I've uh, I I played the crap out of Rocket League, and when I bought Rocket League, it was like four dollars or something. So partway through my vast amount of playing Rocket League, I was like, you know, I probably owe them a little bit more than the like four dollars that I spent on this game. So I bought, I think it was a couple battle passes or something. There's also way back in the day, I used to play a ton of League of Legends. And it was a free game, so I like bought like two skins or something. Yeah, I I don't think anyone would say that that's totally unreasonable yeah but then when you pay like full fat price for some game and then also dip into the store a bunch it's like Ooh. yeah it's it's the triple it's the triple dipping right like if you have a that's a season, the worst a season pass yeah. you, so you have to buy the game you, so you have a season's pass or you a have monthly subscription additional things that you can buy and it's like no, come on yeah. Come on. Yeah. It's tough. It's that tough. Really yeah, loot rough. boxes. Yeah, loot boxes are clearly over my line. If you don't know what you're buying, then you haven't bought something. You've gambled. 
that's it. It's ve- that's very that's very clear. I think that's a really clear line to draw. That's th- thank you. Uh, that's who, a big one. Too. Uh, radioactive in float plane chat. Yeah. Thanks for being a smart whale. <laughs> well, they subscribe to float plane. Ah, there are whales. Yeah. Thanks, whales. Yeah. You, you can't really whale out on float plane. To be fair, we what? should add whale tears. Why don't we have whale tears? Go for it. I mean, do you want to be the one to extract a whale tear? That sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> God, you still have the best joke of the show though i don't even remember what it was but it was amazing something about jesus rising again or something oh yeah 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 when jesus got banned from twitch and came back it's on yeah, brand yeah oh yeah. oh best best joke of the month at least <laughs> Heck yeah. maybe the year I liked it. <laughs> I thought it was very good. If you guys can find a better WAN show joke, I I will be impressed. Um, all right, what else we got going on? Oh, right. We need. Oh my goodness, we need to do some merch messages. We got to get out of here. It's dark. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, we've got a lot of curated ones. Uh, if you guys want to be going through potential. Okay. Okay. Sorry, be, sorry. 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 Before you oh, go. Oh no. yeah. 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 Uh, Porto in Floatplane Chat just linked me a PCMR tweet. Um, which I can, I can share my screen, uh, bojoik. there we go. Most of Steam's recent top sellers are games that haven't been released or have any independent reviews out yet. Also known as the top one that is a game being Starfield. What's the point? Why do we even bother? Who cares? <laughs> Some expansion for Cyberpunk that's not out yet. Uh, F1, there's no reviews for it. I don't know if it's out yet or not. Other games that aren't out yet. These are the top sellers. Games that aren't out yet are the top sellers. There has been a campaign for years to get people to stop pre-ordering. And almost all of the top sellers (laughs) are games that are not out yet. (sighs) Just want Starfield to be good. I'll be at the top. I'll be at the bottom of the potentials. Okay. Luke, do you want to start at the top? I will go at the top. All right, let's get to it. Is Labs going to be the only first-party information that is tested in-house? Or, if there is data that you can't test that is already out there, would you include that data on the website? Hmm. It's going to be only first-party information that's... Oh! If there's data that you can't test that is already out there, would you include that? Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. So that kind of comes back to a question someone asked earlier about whether we would allow users to submit their own reviews. Because, you know, from my point of view, part of a user submitting a review could be submitting some form of data. And obviously, we wouldn't be able to take something like game FPS because it would be collected in a non-controlled environment with variables up the butt, right? Like we can't we can't deal with that. But there are potential pieces of data that we could potentially take from users. I think what you're asking though is whether we would, so anyway, we would, tr- we would want to try to find a way to do that in a verified way. But I think what you're asking is if there is third party data that is just generally available on the web, would we include that? <sighs> Again, the same challenges where if we're not the ones running the tests, we have no control over the test parameters and we don't know if we can trust it so that was that's pretty tough that's not really aligned with our vision um and the bigger issue is that we'd have to find outlets that would want to give us permission for it like i think a really good example of something that we would have wanted to do is all of the um the reviews and data collected by dp review over the years um which shut down recently uh we would have we would have loved to host that but i I don't think amazon probably had any interest in selling it or they or they would have so it's just disappeared forever um yeah hi all do you expect game linked to be a direct competitor to currently existing games news channels such as game ranks friday news show how will you guys differentiate well one of the ways we can differentiate is by i've never even heard of that channel which isn't to say they're not a game ranks yeah yeah, I mean, I'm sure they're a big channel and a big deal. Yeah. I just, I, they are. I don't know anything about that. So if we just do our own thing, 
then probably what we do will be different. <laughs> because it's hard to copy someone else's wheel when you're over here inventing your own wheel in a little corner by yourself. Um, I mean, I, from my point of view, um, the benefit of game linked is going to be that it's the, the the linked crew, right? Like it's it's our unique spin on what we think is important, what we think is cool. It's the way uh, we do stuff. Our humor, yeah. It's 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 our way of doing things. And so if you guys like that, then you like that. And if you like game rank, then game ranks, excuse me, then you like game ranks and you watch that. Like I, I, I think there's a, an enormous audience, and I I don't think that this is a, a zero sum game. Um, it, it's come to my attention that. Um, there has been some some word going around at a recent trade show that Linus Media Group is somehow in the business of of stamping out smaller content creators, and I I just I no. feel like that is such a um, an utterly brain dead take that I just don't even really know how to respond to it, other than to say that that is an utterly brain dead take. Um, you know, on the one hand, and game ranks will be fine. Yeah, that's ex that's exactly it. There, Absolutely, there are so many eyeballs out there. There is so much advertising money out there. There is absolutely no shortage for high quality original content uh, of ways to make money for high quality original content. So, if your concern is competition, then I consider that to be a very anti-consumer take. Um, you should want competition. We should all want to push each other to do better. And that's something that I've been saying for many years has never changed. Obviously, we're over here trying to compete, but we're competing in the sense that we're trying to make better, higher quality content all the time. That's a good thing. And if you object to that, why? So you can phone it in and no one will like do it better? Well, that's stupid. You should be constantly trying to do it better, which I would wholeheartedly encourage you to do. And I'm going to be constantly trying to do it better, which you should wholeheartedly encourage me to do so that we can hold each other accountable. That's competition. That's good for the viewer. That's good for the consumer. And if you disagree, f*** you. <laughs> it's that simple. There you yeah. go. And game ranks is like awesome and they'll be completely fine. Yeah, cool. I'm sure we will eat zero percentage of their pie. Because, like someone in Flow Plane chat said, they'll just watch both. Sweet. Sounds good. Yeah, it's great. Hey, DLL. Like, if I'm interested in a Ooh. game Ooh, here like, he goes. like Starfield, an oh upcoming God. game You're gonna coming get hurt. out soon, You're going to get hurt. I'm going to watch both of them. I'm going to get hurt? It's going to be not what anybody expects. It happens so often. I don't want to be hurt Every again. Every mainline game they have ever released, I have loved. Uh, yeah, same. I expect this to be the same. I'm I'm on the hype train with you. Yeah. So like, what's the? I don't know. Yeah. I didn't like 76. It wasn't a mainline game. I didn't like ESO when it launched. I've heard it's better now. I don't know. I don't really care. Rationalize um, me, daddy. How though? Every mainline game they've released has been good. How do you combat that? I'm trying to stop my heart getting ruined. All right. Let's move we on. Gotta, we gotta jump off this cliff together, Dan. <sighs> All right. Deal. Hey DLL, I'm making Linus and Luke EU commissioners. Are there any tech companies? Uh, what? I don't know. Did I write? Did I read that right? Uh, commissioners. Yeah. Are there any? <laughs> are there any tech companies that you would want broken up or forced to make their proprietary open? Uh, their proprietary open or open in order in to foster, order to more, foster competition. more competition? I, I Sorry. Will, yeah. I'll I'm, help you. I'm getting uh, caught up here. Painful. Um. Good job, Dan. Uh, anyway, tech companies we would want broken up or forced to make their proprietary solutions open. Well, the thing is, I'm not... <sighs> broken up. Probably the most influential hyper-proprietary company these days would be Apple. Um... And it's like, I, man, it's, it's tough because you, you look at things like, I, I think RCS versus iMessage is a really good example of how, um, you know, Apple users will look at iMessage and the, the path that Apple has forged with iMessage and go, well, this is clearly better. Um, and that's good. 
And you know what? You're not wrong. It is it is better than SMS in particular, and it might even be better than RCS. But Apple could also be collaborative with the rest of the industry and make everything better. But they don't. Apple specifically makes their stuff better, and if it degrades the experience for others, well, haha! You should have bought an iPhone. It's it's, it's sort of a crappy attitude. Um, I don't know that I would force them though. I don't I don't really I don't really know if you can force that. I think you just have to um tell consumers that they should just use something else and that won't work and then we'll be left with this. Um <laughs> yeah, I I don't I don't think I would want to force them to do that. Let's see if anyone has any interesting suggestions. Hey, LLD. Oh, I'm a really. Okay. No. No, go ahead. I'm a USA long haul driver. My company is looking at enforcing AI driver facing dash cams. I am concerned about privacy. What are some topics I can bring up to make sure the data is safe? I think the best way, oh man, this is a tough one. AI driver facing dash cams. Your privacy is fucked. Um, because realistically, the reason they want them is to monitor attentiveness, uh, to monitor you know being on task during the job or you know whatever else. There's there's all these reasons that they're going to monitor them, and all the reasons, all the motivations that they have to monitor them would be um, not fulfilled if they were to do this in a way that correctly manages your privacy. Like if they, if for example, all the data was stored locally and only pulled in the event that they needed to review something by pulling it, you know, out of your truck physically. But then, you know, they're going to say, well, we can't do that because then, you know, if something bad happened and you wanted to maliciously destroy the evidence, then you would have access to it before we would and we can't have that. And I see their point, right? Because, you know, if there's an at fault, you know, accident or something like that. Um, they don't want to give you an opportunity to destroy that evidence, right? Um, that's their liability, and that's you know that's their that's their right to be concerned about that. But that means that your data is probably not going to be stored properly. That's tough. I don't have I don't have a good answer. Um, I mean, you could go like, yeah, you could go. Uh, we've got Trevor W. Go and convince all the other drivers to vandalize their cameras. They can't fire all of you. I mean, that yeah, it's some old school union tactics. I mean, um, you need to bring those back. Yeah, Trevor's not really wrong. I mean, I I would personally not advocate for the destruction of of anyone's property. Um, however. You know, I, uh, if you really don't want that camera in your cabin, I'd say that's about the only way that you are going to get anyone's attention. Like, I get it. I totally get it. Uh, I get why they want to do it. And in fact, some of why they want to do it might even be to enforce safety, uh, safety p protocols, right? Making sure that you're not driving too much in a way that's not only unsafe to you, but unsafe to other people on the road. Like, I, f I completely get it. But it ain't taking care of your privacy. Yeah, it's kind of weird too because, like, where's where's the line? Because a bunch of these people sleep in their trucks, right? Because, like, one one generally one, not in the driver's seat, but yeah. One reaction that I first had was like, tons of people are on camera when they're on shift. People, yep. a lot of people here are on camera when they're on. Shift. I'm on camera right now. Yeah, and not like, even not even that one. No, like I'm pretty sure there's probably a security is... camera somewhere. Like there's there's actually cameras all over the place. There's a huge amount of the workforce that's on camera 100 percent of the time, but it it feels like more invasive to be in the cab of one of those trucks, especially if it's one of the long haul ones that you're going to spend a lot of time not on shift in. Yeah, I mean we don't put a camera right on the top of someone's monitor. We just have cameras sort of generally in the space so that we can. Okay, if I'm remote and um, the the building's not armed, I can be like, is, it, is anybody in there? No, okay, I'll yeah, arm the building, right? That's why we have the cameras in the bathroom to make sure that we don't accidentally miss anybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really? Yeah, that was going to take that long to register? Wow. <laughs> I was reading something. You doing okay? <laughs> <laughs> slash oh, S, slash S. 
Yeah, I don't know. Dan? The future is weird. Some of it sucks. Hey, DLL. Good morning from Ireland. Linus, when your kids get older, if they wish to become more involved in home videos and allow their names to be published, would you let them? Yeah, I mean, I think my son's getting pretty close to the age where realistically most of his friends know what his dad does and, um, you know, he doesn't have like in person and anonymity anymore. I think that it's the kind of thing that I wouldn't want to push it super hard. Like if he wanted to start making videos, I think I would, I would support that. Um, I don't know. It's, 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 uh, it's tough. I would definitely want to kind of coach him through it. I think there's things that I did in my career that uh, I would go back and undo. Um, I, I think I would spend a lot less time sort of sharing random personal thoughts, often poorly formulated and even more poorly articulated on social media, for example. Um, you know, these days I mostly just let the content kind of speak for itself. I think that's a much healthier place to be. And I, I would strongly encourage my, my, my kids to take a similar approach. Obviously, you know, I'm just their stupid dad or whatever at the end of the day. Even if I do happen to be an expert in the field, they're going to do whatever the f*** they want because they're kids. But you know, at least you can kind of try and guide it that way. Um, yeah, it's tough. Fortunately, it hasn't really come up lately. Because I've, I've actually told him that he can start a channel if he wants, but there are some prerequisites that he has to hit in order to do it. And he's just been kind of too lazy about it, and I intentionally set the bar kind of high. So that's where we're at <laughs> right now. We're stable. Hey, LLD, data transfer is the main cost for a streaming platform. Would a peer-to-peer -peer protocol make it viable for a company like Floatplane to compete with the casinos and be giants? Uh, none of those have really ever been great, to be honest. I didn't hear the entire thing, but... P2P uh, video streaming. Yeah, P2P it's or tough. or like crypto chain stuff. They've yeah. always had some, some issues. Um... So I don't know. I haven't seen a solution in that space that has been good enough yet, in my opinion. Call it Maybe a, it'll happen someday. Float chain. <sighs> good name. Hey, Linus, you have talked about privateering a lot on the WAN show. Do you ever worry about a large media company coming after you legally and using things you have said on the show against you? Not really, because... You know, whenever we talk about privacy or whenever we show copyrighted content on camera, we are at least cognizant of fair use law, um, which is applicable in our jurisdiction. Also, um, you know, I'm I'm pretty careful to to talk about sort of my approach to ethical piracy. You know, I, I yeah, I will shamelessly download a ripped copy of Tears of the Kingdom and use that. And I will shamelessly download a ripped firmware file or whatever else. As long as I own a Nintendo Switch, I bought two. Um, as long as I own a copy of Tears of the Kingdom, bought two by accident. Um, long story, we needed one for a shoot and then it turned out we like already someone else bought. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The point <laughs> is, I own that. I'll play it on an ROG Ally if I feel like it or I'll play it on my desktop if I feel like it. At the end of the day, Nintendo got their money, which is what makes the world go around. And I think they would be they would be absolutely crazy to go after me for something like this as a legitimate user who's not showing other people how to do it, who's not distributing any of this content but who has just decided that their ancient, stupid handheld is ancient and I don't feel like playing games at 30 FPS. Um, I don't know. I mean, a company like Nintendo, you never know. But I, I think in most cases, the, the PRL that they're going to end up taking, going after someone like me who is really not the problem. The problem is people who aren't giving them money, right? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I just, I, I, I don't, I don't see it happening. Hi. It's not a challenge, by the way. <laughs> Hi, when uh, DLL, do you have any thoughts on the writer's strike, especially regarding its concerns with AI? Do you think ALMG will rely less on human writers and more on AI in the future? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that as a business right now, you, you've got to have a death wish if you're not looking at machine learning, large language models, AI, whatever it is that you want to call it, and trying to figure out how to build that into your workflow. Uh, I think that upcoming um, vertical specific channels might have episodes that are in, almost entirely written by AI and then edited by a writer. So we just hand it a labs data sheet and basically say, go, um, you know, write a, a, a summary in this style. And those videos are super formulaic, like realistically, okay, power supplies, right? The B450M and B550M and B650M, uh, you know, you might get a human who sits down and talks through the B series um, or something like that. But if our goal is to have a dedicated video for basically every product so you can get just fundamental information about it by just entering a part number into a YouTube search, we're not realistically going to be able to do that without some degree of automation. So uh, yeah, I think it's absolutely going to be part of the plan. Is Luke a Lord of the Rings fan? Yes. Do DLL have any thoughts or hot takes on remaking IPs and expanding cinematic universes? Oh. I don't think that it's a particularly hot take to say that any IP that is based on the magnum opus of, you know, a generational talent that then deviates from the original content is bound to be dog shit. I have not even thought about watching the new Lord of the Rings stuff. I don't know if it's good. I don't know if it's bad. I don't care. I have no interest. This is like, this is like what you were talking about earlier with Breath of the Wild. You're like, I loved Breath of the Wild. It's very possibly my favorite game of all time. And I don't necessarily desire for more. It was good. It's done. I watched the Lord of the Rings movies. They were amazing. They had a very large impact on my family in particular. We had posters of them all over the place. The Hobbit is what got me into reading. I didn't like reading. And then my, I think it was my mom started reading The Hobbit to me. What do you have against I, Pennsylvania? I didn't... <laughs> Because I, did, I didn't like I didn't like reading at the time, and I was like, "Whoa, this is really cool!" And then I got yeah. into The Hobbit, I got into Lord of the Rings, I got into the Harry Potter books back then, all these other different types of things. Really big for my family, and and it's good. It can sit there in its little wrapped with a bow on it package and never really be touched again. Well, the it's thing like like the Star Wars stuff. I'm just ignoring that there's any new ones at this point. Yeah, well, the I thing don't care. the thing you're figuring out is that. It's just branding. Yeah. At the end of the day, some new Lord of the Rings won't be Lord of the Rings. It'll be some, it's a licensed IP and it's some entirely new thing written by someone who didn't write Lord of the Rings and does probably doesn't fully understand it. Again, I, I haven't watched Rings of Power. I don't really care to. I'm not as into Lord of the Rings as he is even. Like I haven't even made it through the books. I've tried quite a few times. I, I it's got to be because the Tolkien estate won't allow it or something. Like I would read an abridged Lord of the Rings trilogy. <laughs> like if yeah. someone could just cut it is out definitely a little like if someone could cut out the bullshit that everyone knows is bullshit, um, then I would definitely it's sit like, down and read them. My buddy and I used to watch Gladiator surprisingly often. Yeah, but we would just skip to all the fight scenes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't think Gladiator is an example of a film that actually has a ton of utterly unnecessary content. I agree. It's an amazing movie, but um, it's, it. yeah, I don't know. Uh, Lord but of the that's Rings not the only definitely... kind of movie you and your buddy skipped around to different scenes in. <laughs> <laughs> that's um, how you watch movies. Uh, uh, Lord of the Rings books definitely, they they were written for a time where people had a much larger, longer attention span. I think that's what's going on. There's also some weird stuff. If, you, if you've if you only watched uh, the movies, going back and reading the books, there's some stuff that didn't go into the movies that is that is odd, to say the least. Like Tom Bombadil, literally at all. That's just like... That's where I stop every time. Tom Bombadil? Yeah, because I, I just like, I have OCD and I have to read the whole book. <laughs> I can't just actually skip a bunch of chapters of a book. That's not how my brain works. And I just, oh, I'm so bored. This He's is so, so creepy. So and 
fucking stupid. Singing and what's and, like, happening? And he transforms into an animal or something. <laughs> what is happening right now? I don't... Uh, I can't do this. Yeah. 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 Anyways, moving on. Hello, Dan at all. Question for Luke and Linus. What is a feature in cars that you thought was stupid before you tried and now cannot live without? Um, oh, wow. Cannot live without is tough. I recently downgraded my vehicle from a Porsche Taycan Turbo S to a Chevy Volt. So I was driving the Volt for the first almost three weeks. Actually, I was driving it for a while after because I don't like the McCann and I just kept driving the Volt, but then logistics got mad at me because technically the Volt belongs to the company now, so I have to give it back. Yeah. Um, but I, right. I, I went from a turbo, a Taycan Turbo S to a Chevy Volt and um, probably the biggest noticeable change was that I really liked having my leather steering wheel back. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, obviously it doesn't accelerate as fast. Like, I just... Um, yeah, I, yeah it, it doesn't me it doesn't meaningfully change my life and so for me to say cannot live without oh, air conditioning you know like upgrading the civic to the volt but you you'd have to part of the question was that you like disliked it at first or something right oh right oh yeah. no i've always liked air conditioning yeah there's literally nothing for me uh i also still have a car from like initially design. okay so. i've got something i initially disliked power windows really i was like that's stupid this is far more reliable and then what i learned is that actually the mechanical ones are not very reliable yeah and now i prefer power windows but <laughs> i still hate utterly unnecessary um like electronic door mechanisms like on the the tw on my 2016 honda odyssey it just it makes me angry every single time this should just be a latch and it should just have an electronic lock like every other door on this car. Why is it an electronic mechanism for the latch? That makes no sense to me. And ours actually broke. So it was like validating. This is unreliable. This is stupid. My personal anecdotal experience is more important than whatever <laughs> engineering reasons they had for implementing it this way. <clears throat> Yeah. Slash S. I'm, I'm just going to do that from now on because people can't tell. It's not a bad idea. Hey, DLL, LTT content. Oh, oh, oh no. I have another one. <laughs> backup oh, cameras. Oh God. I hated backup cameras. Really? Yeah. The one And the one on the Volt is amazing. The one on my Odyssey sucks. Was it like an elitist thing? The like, one I on don't the, need this. The one on the Taycan sucks. It was, it was, I wouldn't describe it as elitist, but... I definitely didn't need it. I still don't need Is it. Is that why you didn't like it, though? Well, it was just habit. Or like, was I it just, because the like, quality it. was bad or something? No, like, what did, was the reason? I just didn't need it. Yeah, so it was elitist thing. It's not elitist. I just didn't need it. So that, because you didn't need it, that made you dislike it? Yeah, I just thought it was stupid. Not necessary. It was like just added cost. Like, why did I pay for uh, this? Oh, okay. That's fair. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. But the one on the Volt is awesome. It shows you exactly where the like the outer wall of your tire will go isn't the one on yours your current on the, car the like i can one sucks yeah. i cannot even <laughs> it's so fathom weird. how bad it is it's so odd yeah it's just like the camera angle's stupid the lines aren't where the car goes it's it's it is it's very mind-blowing how bad it is when my stupid chevy that costs like a fifth as much is perfect <laughs> yeah Hey, DLL, LTT content has been a topic of lunch table discussions at multiple big tech companies I've worked in. What industry or product have you actually felt were impacted by your videos? Often we don't know. Yeah. Those discussions take place, like you said, internally, and the feedback often doesn't, doesn't make its way back to us. Um... I, you know, I feel I feel like my investment in Framework has been impactful. It was really cool seeing their factory, seeing them actually making these machines that are going to go to actual people who actually care about the mission. Like, that's really cool, but they're not a big company. Um, there, I've, I've been very surprised by the the people. Not, not necessarily this. I, I think this one was more talking about products and companies. Um, but 
companies are made up of people and people make products. So I'm, I'm extrapolating. I don't know if it's fair, but I've been very surprised at the people that seem to have been impacted by our content. Um, like those, those dudes down at NASA, like it just, it seems so high level. Yeah. I guess like, wow, you're way smarter than me. Yeah. Why do you listen to anything I have to say? Yep. Oh, because you spend all your time doing like smart guy shit and you don't have time to pay attention to this thing that I spend all my time doing. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. But it's still <laughs> just like, it's still like, I, 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 I get it, but it's still just, it's surprising and it's kind of cool. Hi, DLL. Listening to The Wan Show helps me get through work. Pretty Spotify listener. What's the biggest misstep you made getting LTT to where it is now? And how have you stopped it from happening again? I don't know. We've made some, we've made some HR mistakes over the years. Um, we're going to keep making them. People are messy. You yeah. know, that's uh, that's not a knock against them. If people weren't, if everyone wasn't different, the world would be a really boring place. But you know, it's it's hard to get, it's hard to get two people aligned on everything. Now try and get a hundred people aligned on everything. It's not going to happen, right? So everyone's got their own agenda, and that's not a bad thing. It just uh, it's just a challenging thing. And so yeah, I'd I'd say HR is the thing that we have and will continue to do most wrong. <laughs> Hi, LLD. Just curious on the like to dislike ratio on the N64 unboxing. Did oh. the predicted backlash manifest itself in any quantitative manner? That's a really good question. I doubt it because it didn't end up being a sealed N64. If it had been, I think people would have been pretty upset. Um, I was really glad. It was actually not, uh, it was not my decision. It was a decision made by dbrand or rather um, dbrand was too cheap to buy a sealed one because it was like 16 grand or something like that. But they made the decision to not send any sealed inbox ones. And I'm extremely glad that they did because that would have been pretty bad. Um, oh man, what is it? Engagement, it's the engagement tab. It's so hard to just find basic stats these days. Uh, no, 98% like dislike ratio. People seem to generally like that video. That's above average for that channel. Love what you guys do. Keep up the amazing work. Now for the question, if you've heard of it, thoughts on the Porsche's synthetic fuel. Do you think it will ever be viable on a large scale? Being not uh, an engineer, it's impossible for me to say. I mean, there are there are things that exist today that I would have said will never happen. I mean, microprocessor, pff, come on, you manufacture something that small, impossible, right? And yet here we are. Um, you know, I don't I don't know if they're going to be able to manufacture it the kind of scale that we can pump. You know dinosaurs out of the ground yes i know it's not actually broken down dinosaurs that's debunked but that, that doesn't matter the point is oil um you know, no I, I i i it doesn't look feasible to me but i never would have thought that you could pump petroleum at the rate that they do today so you know what do i know it's obviously going to take time but um, it's clear that there are problems with electrification that do need to be solved and whether it's hydrogen fuel cell or whether it's alternative fuels um, I hope, I hope we can get there. Whether it's a alternative anode and cathode materials, you know, that's another option or far more recyclable batteries. So we can kind of keep reusing them. Uh, the way that we're going right now is not good. Um, I just don't know the answer. Hey Linus, how is your Epson LS 12,000 holding up? I'm waiting on mine to come in as I build my home theater, but I've heard some quality control issues. Mine's been good. I can't speak to any quality control issues because that inherently would affect a subset of units, uh, but mine has been really solid. I absolutely love that thing. The only reason that I would look past it is if I could get something quieter. And it's not loud, it's quiet for a projector, but I had aimed to have that room be like silent. And the projector's like right above you. And so even a quiet fan is still, you know, it's, it's, it's going there. So if I could get like a, like a micro LED display or something like that in the future, I would, I'd be super into that. Hey, LDL, I'm really happy with performance and don't care about ray tracing. 
How many generations is AMD from being able to beat NVIDIA in a 4090 class card? Is being the strong value second the goal? Um, yeah, it's impossible to say. It all comes yeah. down to AMD's strategy, right? Like they've they've been they've gone all they're up and all over the place over the years when it comes to GPU. It's obvious they really want to compete in data center right now. Like they just released a new Radeon Instinct that's like super beefy or whatever else. But there have been times when they're consumer focused and they don't even have a high end. They're just kind of like, oh yeah, you just get more of the low end ones. Like back when they did the 3870 or with Polaris, the RX 480 and 580. There have been times when they've gone hard after top tier, like they did with the R RX 290 series, I guess it was, whatever, Hawaii, uh, codename Hawaii. Um, I don't know, they're all over the place. They might not even do a high end GPU next generation for all I know. I mean, I don't work at AMD, right? Um, yeah, hard to say. I'd be surprised if next gen they don't have something with 4090 performance, but I've been surprised before. <laughs> Is oh. there, uh, sorry? Yeah. Sec IT guy in Floatplane Chat asks, why haven't we seen a Mark Rober collab yet? You haven't yet. <gasps> yeah, I know Mark, he's a super cool guy and we do have something coming. Is there anything about LTX that has everyone sweating? everything uh, ltx is a super stressful time for us there's a lot of work to do uh there's a lot to go wrong if we absolutely nail it you know everyone will talk about what a great event it was but if we screw something up um then everyone will talk about that one thing we screwed up so it's just it's a ton of pressure um yeah i think we're i think the biggest thing we're sweating is is everyone gonna have fun is there gonna be enough to do and we're, we're working hard on that. Guess what? I have achieved my goal that I've had since the first LTX. There is a dunk tank. <laughs> Do you volunteer as tribute? Yeah, I'm done, of course. All right, let's go. It's for charity. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, so uh, I think better. it's going to be BC Children's. I was in when I thought it was for nothing, but yeah, that's cool. For nothing? No, it would be for... I, I was going <laughs> to charge for it regardless. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's for, the pro, it's for the charity of Linus Media Group Incorporated. We've got a lab to build. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> Hi, DL and young Luke. It's oh. currently 5 a.m. where I live, and I'm up with my three-month-old. Your voices have always helped soothe him. How old were you when you got into tech, and what piqued your interest? Oh, very young. I don't know, um, and it was definitely my dad, like unquestionably my dad. Um, yeah, I don't know. So so young that I definitely don't remember, uh, and my dad just having this unending curiosity for tech stuff um, is what did it for me. Hey, DLL, just started a new job, and the IT department asked me to DM them my single sign-on password. What is the most egregious security breach you've seen in your careers? <laughs> yeah, I had, the really? same, I had the same reaction. Wow. Um, I keep having to do that for Linus, and it's getting really irritating. What? Oh, just uh, him DMing me his passwords and me putting them in Keeper for him. Oh, I mean, that's... What? I never DM'd you a password. No, no, it's never happened here. Oh, okay. As far as I know. But, Jeez. But the, the IT department I asking do that, that? Like, maybe the other way around. Like, Did you hear the question? What? Re restate the question. Oh. I just started a wait, new job. Wait, what? Oh, that's really stupid. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I was really focused on what's the most egregious, and then I was hiding because I was expecting it to be something I did. Oh, yeah. For no, once, uh, not at all. Security stuff? Um, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it probably is something Linus did. Um, I mean, was it literally last WAN show? You just, like, streamed an internal document and also literally shared the thing that that internal document that should never be shared had a thing on it saying not to share. But how cool was it to see the In Progress Labs website? 
the people love it. They yeah, love they me. Did. I give them what uh, they want. But yeah, I don't know. But uh, all, I, probably the most egregious, egregious security things I have personally dealt with are probably from him. Um, but I don't know. I'm not sure. But that's hilarious. And uh, that IT person needs to go through some retraining or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Hi, DLL Linus. The CPU fidget spinner chat earlier got me thinking. Uh, would you consider doing a program where people can send in their own old CPUs to be turned into a fidget spinner? <clears throat> Given that part of the goal is reduce, reuse, recycle, etc., etc., I don't think that we would be looking to um, uh, generate the kind of carbon emissions that would result from sending a particular old sh cpu you know halfway around the world and then back I, I just i just don't think it makes any sense we can get a different old cpu that happens to already be here or is shipped in bulk and you'll be happy with that oh on the topic of mark rober mark rober just spoke at my graduation and it got me thinking would you ever consider being a graduation speaker for a college or university um, my actual my high school brought up the possibility. They brought me in to give a little talk to some of the students at like a parent dinner night thing. It was really fun, actually. It was cool. Um, I I uh, I went I went off script and talked about how school's not the only path. Um, you know, I was just like, hey, <laughs> things they might not tell you. <laughs> that's uh, that's so that's very Linus of you. That um, makes sense. But they, uh, the the administration actually loved it and said that you know asked if I would be interested in speaking at their at their at their graduation this year. It's June sixteenth, and they haven't brought it up again. So clearly, I'm not doing that. But yeah, I mean, it's the kind of thing I, I don't mind. I don't mind public speaking. I I, I kind of like it actually, and it was it was pretty fun to talk about something different. Uh, one of the things that the business team has been trying to get me onto is like the uh, the like the talk circuit, um, like speaker circuit. Um, we've had a few offers, like very generous offers. Like thank you very much if you know anyone from these organizations is watching, uh, but we just haven't found anything that really, you know, makes sense. Uh, for me, you know, one of them was like a, like an IT security conference or something like that. And I'm just looking at it going, this is not my wheelhouse, yeah. you know, on the subject of that recent merch message. Like I, you know, I'd love to talk about, you know, something to do with whether it's influencer marketing or man, I'd love to talk about something to do with sort of consumer, tr the importance of consumer trust and building it and how, how brands destroy themselves by eroding the their their trust like look look how how much trust did you have in Amazon 10 years ago how much trust oh, yeah. do you have in Amazon today yeah like basically they've gone from yeah Amazon will always do the right thing to Amazon doesn't give two hoots about the right thing and screw those guys right like that that doesn't happen by accident that happens that happens methodically carefully over time that that, that trust gets eroded and it's the wrong kind of methodical, the wrong kind of careful. You're you're carefully trying to, uh, you know, abuse people just the right amount, in just the right way. Uh, and I think it sucks, right? So, if the right thing came along, if it was something I really wanted to talk about, then uh, I, I I would I would be really interested in it. But the other thing is that it has to make financial sense. And having me out of office for yeah, three it's days, pretty unlikely. One day travel. One day event, one day travel back. That's a really high opportunity cost. A lot of what we do still kind of runs on Linus's sheer dragon energy these days. And it's something that we want to improve. But um, if you don't apply for that writer position, you know, then it's harder, right? I've done a few of those. Um, I actually find them kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I I kind of trolled the crap out of one of my previous educational institutions. Oh, though, that's fun! Uh, because they they sent me a thing saying that they wanted me to like headline some uh, alumni event thing as like a speaker, oh. and I was like, yeah, I left. <laughs> <laughs> I just I sent them an email back being like, I mean, I'm down, 
but I am not technically even a part of the thing that you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I don't remember. I think they responded. I don't even remember what it was, but I, I didn't end up doing it for whatever reason. Uh, but I've done quite a few of those types of things. Hello, Luke and Linus. Actually, Hello. this is mostly a Linus question. But whatever happened Unusual. to the gaming minivan? It's back. Oh, We're working no. on it. Um, the writer that was working on that project is no longer here. And so it's just been kind of in writing limbo. And so my stupid van is only sort of half converted to a gaming minivan. But it's coming. We have a plan. I think MSI is going to be sponsoring it and we're going to use laptops for the, for the systems, but we're going to come up with like cool monitor mounts and we're going to get the batteries in there. The solar panels are on, which didn't happen in time for the video. So that'll be a cool update for part two. Really hear them on the highway. It's not as aerodynamic as it once was that minivan. Um, anywho, yes, it's coming. And I think, for bonus points, we're going to try and get the Works Anywhere like business class Starlink so that you can be gaming online from anywhere. I'm, cool. I'm pretty stoked. Hello, Linus. Would you rather get a COD Damascus sink or toilet? Sink. Got to be the sink. I like the, I like the water kind of like, you know, washing down and like, you know, with the... With the, the, the folded steel look, you know, I'm into it. Hmm. Luke and Linus, when you hang out from work, are you able to keep the conversation away from work? And if so, do you have any tips to keep conversation away from office things? Oh, man. Oh, man. I did the worst. I wouldn't even call it passive aggressive. It was just active aggressive. Um, at, the, at the retreat? No. Oh. Oh, what was that? that you just not engaging with work conversations and sitting on the ally? I, I was talking. No, oh, yeah, sure. I was installing games for when we were going to play <laughs> games later, you fuck. You enjoyed the games. We okay. found Mage Quit. Mage Quit was great. Yeah. No, I was researching eight player party games and I was installing them. You were very often saying, I don't want to do work stuff right now. And then we'd be like, oh, I have to talk about quarterly, whatever. Okay, well, that like, I did. Uh, fine. Yeah, that I did. Yeah. But when I was on the ally, I was still <laughs> listening. I was just idly like installing games and stuff. It was fine. I was engaged. <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. No, okay. that's not what I'm talking about. No. <laughs> I'm talking about at our um, at our ba work badminton night. Um, we had someone just. Uh, there are also like randoms just in the badminton community who come because they know people who know people and you know whatever. Anyway, so we we have guests as well as as well as work people because we can't always fill it with work people. And one of them is. Um, I think works at a tech company locally and, you know, knows, knows of us. And, um, anyway, started to talk to me about, you know, potentially, you know, covering the stuff there. And I'm like, I'm not working right now. <laughs> and they're just like, oh, okay. Well, like, um, you know, I was just thinking, yeah, sorry. I'm really not, not working, working right, right now. now. <laughs> <laughs> I've decided to I be am more extremely not working right now. I've decided to be more direct with people. And they're Sometimes like, you have to be. So how do I? I'm like, you reach out to the email address on our website. And they're like, okay, but I'm really just not working right now. I'm, just, I'm sorry. Yeah. So the, the, like, you really shouldn't have to be. But a lot of people, and it sounds like in this case, it was like this. A lot of people just aren't going to take the hint. So you just have to be really direct. Yeah. It just is what it is. Yeah. That was definitely the vibe I got. Super nice person. Just want to be very clear. It's nothing personal. I just wasn't working at that not, time. Not working right now. Yeah. I'm just here so I don't get fined. Feel free to <laughs> feel free to talk to me about work when I am working. I'll even say the same thing to Yvonne sometimes. I'm like, okay, you get one more work thing. <laughs> I was going to say, like, we'll, we'll talk about work stuff, but usually it's short. Yeah. And it's like not, yeah, it's not super laborious work stuff, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Linus and team. I work in engineering education and saw the videos of you and Dustin learning about the Saturn V. 
I was wondering what still sticks out to you from that experience, good or bad. Oh, chatting with Luke was amazing. The uh, not you, better Luke. It usually is amazing. The one who like worked on a rocket, yeah, Luke. That's, yeah, that's it's, pretty cool. Yeah, I'm okay that, with that being better. Luke. That was super cool. Hi, big fan of the new house series. Of all the smartification you've added to your home, what has been the biggest quality of life improvement for you and your family? I like not having to turn off lights. The, the smart lights suck, and there's a lot of problems with the implementation, but just um, le like when my hands are full and I'm walking in from the garage, just walking in and not worrying about it because the lights will just turn off in a bit. I, I actually really like, and so I, I do want to figure out how to make it more better. -er. The blinds I have done literally nothing with yet, though. Most of them aren't even adopted by the controller yet. <laughs> Hi, LLD. What happens to items that are returned? Will there be an LTTreturns.com? Uh, if they are still in brand new condition, they are sold. So we do we do sort them. We don't just throw them in a dumpster. Do you see the Do you see that uh, article recently? Eight hundred and fifty billion dollars is wasted to returns now. It's up like by double since twenty twenty. Yeah, just online returns just being this like enormous just waste of everything. Uh, incredible. Anyway, uh, yeah, we do go through things, and if it's in brand new condition, then we'll resell it. And I think that if it's not, it actually goes in a bin for staff. Um, don't quote me on that, though. I, I know that there's something. We don't throw things away. That's really stupid. First time WAN show watcher and orderer. Keep it up, LTT. With the lab's review suggestions, would you accept sponsored product reviews, uh, i.e. a company or user donation to get a product tested? Um, okay, so I got to stop you right there. Um, hold on. Okay, here it is. Uh, there is no such thing as a sponsored product review. A product review is conducted independently. A sponsored video is conducted in collaboration with the manufacturer or the marketer of the product. There is a very, very clear and perpetual line between those things. It cannot be sponsored and a review. It can be a sponsored video, sponsored showcase, sponsored unboxing. Cannot be a sponsored review. So, no. However, if a company wanted us to test something for their own information because they really like our testing lab or whatever else, I think that is something that the lab would like to work towards being able to offer as a service. It will not be a review. I hope that kind of clears that up. Hi, Linus. Wanted to know your thoughts on Wendover's recent video showing Nebula now worth $150 million and have more than 650,000 paid subs. Do you think their business model might be something Floatplane adopts? Uh, I don't think so. It's never what Floatplane was created to do. Um, and... Yeah, you know, you've got to give a lot of credit to the team there. They have, uh, they've managed to, they've managed to really build, I think, uh, a really clever vertically integrated services company. Like the 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 integration between Standard and Nebula is something that is uh, pretty neat and has a lot of value for a lot of creators. Um, what I will say is, you know, from my experience dealing with them and from my position as a creator, it doesn't have a lot of value. And I've talked with other creators for whom it didn't have a lot of value. Um, not every creator stays on Nebula. Uh, you might have noticed that. Um, so I think there's a certain style of creator. I think there's a certain size of creator. I think there's a certain personality of creator that works really well with what they've built over there. Um, and there's certain ones that don't, and um, yeah, you, you can't you can't knock it. They've they've done a really good job. They've built a really successful business. Um, I saw that my speculation that you know maybe they were trying to sort of add subscriber count to um, you know to look for the exit. 
uh, is apparently not true. So, you know, that's that's good. I'm really glad to hear that. I don't really understand what the motivation was aside from that. So that's that's tough because, you know, as far as I can tell, it didn't really raise a significant amount of money given the amount that they spend on advertising and stuff these days. So I, okay, I, sure. Um, but apparently it's it's not to just, you know, juice subscriber counts for an exit. So that's cool. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't really know what else there is is to say about it if i think that if our incoming ceo looked at the technology of floatplane and said you know hey uh you guys should uh you guys should apply this to you know a, a re-pick up fast yeah yeah floatplane yeah yeah pick up floatplane as a service you know uh you know every you know fitness guru or whatever who's trying to sell video courses or whatever you know hosting it on hosting it on floatplane as a service or or whatever else it is we have really cool technology we suck at marketing and packaging it. I'm not going to deny that. We've always been kind of tech heads at heart, and I've learned some business stuff begrudgingly over the years. But I have no doubt that, you know, here we, we, are, we are also this, like, crazily vertically integrated company compared to what a lot of other influencers are doing. I mean, we have everything. We have our own accounting. Our, our accounting department is like five, six people now. Our HR department is two plus like it's kind of it's a it's a little bit it's a little bit fuzzy sort of who's in what department i mean our our sales team oh dan dan the alarm uh our sales team is is like half a dozen people um we have you know de dedicated graphic designers who work on thumbnails who work on merch designs we have a team of like over a dozen video editors um uh, like we're a it's kind of incredible the breadth of things that we do here. I think a lot of people don't really realize it. They look at um, the the videos and think, oh yeah, okay, so they have what? They have editors, they have writers, they have hosts. But no, it's um, it's it's a pretty deep organization now. And I look at it and I go, hey, <laughs> why is it that all of these departments only serve Linus Media Group? Why does our sales team not do deals for? other people like we actually we know all the brands we know all the creators why don't we act as an agency in a lot of cases it's because the opportunity cost of working for another creator is really high compared to just working for ourselves but in some cases like creator warehouse i'm looking at it going like yeah why 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 don't we design t-shirts and water bottles and stuff for other creators there's absolutely no reason that we couldn't do that um i don't know we're just really busy yeah we uh, we do have literally too much to do already. Um, yeah. So adding a bunch more stuff to it is like, ugh. we got to pick our battles, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, I I don't know. I don't know. There's I I look at what Standard and Nebula have done, and I kind of go, yeah. If I uh, if I was if I was a better business mind, we have literally all the pieces. Thumbnails, sales, development, literal a video streaming platform. Like, um, yeah, there's, there's no reason we couldn't build something like that. I just, uh, I'm a tech head. That's uh, not going to apologize for it. And we've done all right doing that too. Like, I, it's been a good path. Yeah. Like, I can't really look at that other path and go, gee, I sure wish I'd gone down that path. This is a great path. I like our path. Worked out really good. Because we make other stuff too. Hey, technically, uh, the majority of the developers under the Floatplane umbrella do not work on floatplane.com. Yeah, they do all kinds of cool stuff, like especially for the store. We've got some really cool tools coming, um, being able to pick exactly what bits you want when you order a bit set rather than just ordering packs. That's coming. Pretty um, sweet. It's going to take a while, uh, but it's coming. The dev work on that's done. There's a lot of other problems to solve <laughs> yeah yeah the actual like real world physical implementation of like how do we actually like make sure we get all the right things <laughs> hey lld ldt store question what items took the longest or shortest time from initial thought to item available on the ldt store we always take a really long time to do stuff, but I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look at it. Oh, you know what? My guess was screwdriver. The Jerry rig everything razor knife. We basically went. 
hey, Zach, can we carry your knife? And he was like, I guess. Wait, wait was the question shortest? I thought it was longest. Shortest. Both. Oh. Both. It was both. Oh. Oh. I mean, longest is the screwdriver, obviously, but yeah. yeah. Um, wow. Ooh, the Nato edition's been announced? Yes. You can sign up for notifications now. Oh. Two colorways. Oh. <gasps> Um, oh yeah, I guess we haven't talked about that on WAN show. Yeah, no. pre-register email. Yeah, I uh, I have a knock to a related question actually. Sure, hit me while I think about this. With the this new... was really fast, but it's just a design on a water bottle. Okay, sorry, I'm listening. With the new Noctua screwdrivers, can we expect an LTT back collab with Noctua? A what collab? Back collab. Black back collab. Like they're gonna do an LTT product. Well, they've done that before. I don't think we're doing another round of that anytime soon, but I mean, you know, we could. The fans, right? Doctor is a super weird company. And I mean that in the, you know, most kind. We, we like them. Yeah. Yeah. They're, it's, they're, it's, they're definitely weird though. It's like when you have a really good friend that you've known for a long time and you're just like, you know what? You're pretty f***ing <laughs> weird. You know, like there's, <laughs> yeah, they're just, they're super. I feel like there was, <laughs> I feel like there's something behind that. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're just, yeah, they're a super weird company. So just the way they do things is not like other companies do things. And I got to respect that, right? Like they just, uh, they just, they, they do their thing. And um, so when we've done product collabs, we've never done it in a long-term way. Like they don't do a fatality power supply line and then just like roll with that forever. They, they, they do their thing. And I'm like, yeah, cool. I respect it. Um, LLD, what's a cool application of new technology that clearly wasn't intended use case, but it just fit perfectly? I read this and I ended up curating this because I couldn't think of one on the spot, but I swear I've ran into this before. Using stuff not what it's for. There's got to be a good answer to this, but I, I couldn't think of something. I mean, there's got to be a lot of things with phones. Like, I don't think anyone imagined using your phone as a level. And it doesn't work very well, but it's something. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Clearly wasn't the intended use case. I just got a notification from my eight sleep bed that it's preparing my bed for sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Little does it know. <laughs> Poor eight sleep. Never stood a chance. Oh. Speaking of people who might be in bed. Uh, hey, Mr. Nick Light, uh, you are live on the WAN show. Okay. Oh, did I did I catch you at a bad time? No. Okay, my sincerest and most fake apologies if I um, if I did catch you at a bad time. Uh, no, no, it's, it's a good thing, though. It's a good thing. Uh, Maxwell C. asks, first time catching the live stream after years of watching the show. Have you ever considered any tie-dye color options for any of your clothing or towels? Where did you put them? Oh, uh, back in the other building Ugh. where they belong. Ugh. <laughs> Would you Can, like me to make a field trip? Should, should I show the real one? Is it uh, worth going over there? No, you tell me, man. It's already on the site, isn't it? Oh, is it? Yeah. Uh oh. Oh, all right. You have to like go to buy tickets and then after that you can see it. I thought this was like a bigger reveal than I guess it is. We we, we have this <laughs> listed? On the, not not LTT store, but LTX. Oh. Yeah, yeah, you can pre buy. Yeah. Oh. Wait, I think Yeah, you know. We did, we did a thing. We set it up. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we announced this on WAN Show like weeks ago. Oh, goodness. Yeah, uh, bro. <laughs> okay. So basically, as long as people have a $10 tier float plane subscription, they can buy the LTX exclusive tie-dye hoodie and t-shirt then, right? Not right now, but before the show, yes. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah, that, that's that's an announcement. Well, I think we already teased it, but that that'll come later. Um, but you, if you have an LTX ticket, you can pre-purchase your pickup merch, and then hopefully sooner than later, you'll be able to buy it if you have a ten dollars tier on Pokemon. Okay. And get it shipped to you. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. 
Uh, but the shipping will be after the show, remember. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. All right, all right, all right, all right. All okay, bye. Okay. Go home. I will never go home. I will always do my <laughs> show forever. Uh, okay. Yeah, so, yes. And they look awesome. I love them. Uh, the, so the LTX exclusive t-shirt and hoodie are in this sick red, blue, purple, black tie-dye that is amazing. And uh, we fixed it today. I approved the shirt material, like, four months ago or whatever and it was perfect and then we got our production samples and they sucked Ooh. they were like stiff and awful and we got the new samples that are back to the original material today and production's going ahead so everything's going to be okay nice um people are saying and linus is losing it he also announced the knock to a screwdriver yes but what i didn't announce is that there's a sign up sheet so the sign up sheet is new on the site Hey, Lina has been loving the screwdriver. Ever thought about doing signed merch or anything related to exclusive items? Yeah, we've done Lambo edition stuff, like pink and green, limited edition, 69 units only, stuff like that. And we've signed stuff like that. Um, I don't know. For me, I, I, I don't want to do too much of it, I think, is, is the big one. A, it's hard on my wrist. And B, um, I don't know. It's... Uh... It just seems like if you do it too much, it cheapens it, I guess. Like, I'd prefer to sign things where people find me in person at LTX. I, I, I don't actually like signing things that much outside of, you know, where I'm supposed to be signing things in case you were getting any clever ideas. Uh, I will because you've put me in a position where if I say no, I'm risking seeming like a complete asshole on Reddit when you post about it later, about what a stuck up jerk I was and I wouldn't sign anything. So I always will. But, um, you know, if I'm eating dinner with my family, I think the most, the most respectful thing to do if you must approach someone in public is have your camera open, have your finger on the camera button, say, Hey, do you mind if I grab a quick selfie? Go like this and immediately leave. Don't fumble with the camera. Don't hand it off. Don't, don't look for someone else to hand it off to. Don't get one in landscape, then another one in portrait. Just, just take a picture, document the memory, and then be like, hey, thanks, and leave. That's, that is the perfect A-plus way to do it, in my humble opinion. Like, I, I'm not trying to be a jerk about it. Just sometimes I'm legitimately having private time. I'm not working or I am legitimately working really intensely. So when I'm somewhere like Computex and you can literally with your own two functioning eyes see that I'm in the middle of a conversation, interrupting is rude because interrupting is always rude. It doesn't matter if I'm a public figure and you really want to take a picture. It's rude. If you can see that I am walking somewhere um, intently, like with purpose, I'm walking fast. My camera operator is encumbered with a whole bunch of equipment. Don't stop us for like 45 seconds while you figure out how to operate the camera app on your phone. It's the longer you interrupt for, the more rude it is. It's kind of what I'm trying to say. I L L D. Will we get an option to send in merch messages when we make merch purchases on the LTX website? Additionally, do you have an updated timeline on when a schedule will be made available? Mm. I, I, I doubt that's something we're going to invest development time in. I'm very sorry. Uh, and the schedule will be available as soon as we are able. We actually had some creators reach out with a super cool idea for a panel that I don't know if it'll actually happen. But man, if it happens, I'm stoked. Hey, LLD, just like Apple in their presentations, never using AR, VR, or AI, switching them with spatial computing and ML, does LMG writing have any such banned words you just can't use in videos? 
Um, so we've tried to ban some things, but we got lazy about it. Basically, we wanted to ban AI because it's not AI; it's machine learning. We wanted to ban pricing that ends in ninety nine, but it's just really inconvenient because it's not technically accurate to say that the price of Apple's new headset is $3,500. It's actually $3,499. That's how much it actually is, whether we like that or not. We also do all our pricing with 99s because it works. Um, and I just don't care because it's a factual fact that that's the price, and I, yeah, yeah whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, we've, we've tried at times, but I can't think of any that we've actually been successful at because it's just a lot of... We have enough things to remember when we're trying to make a good video. It's tough. What are your thoughts on the gigabyte not RMAing GPUs with cracked PCBs as a result of GPU sag pressure? Ugh, this is something I meant to look into after I saw Rossman's video about it. If that's the case, that sucks. Uh, but I have not looked into it. I don't know how widespread the issue is. I'm afraid I just don't really have much to contribute to this one. And I don't want to risk saying something that's wrong. Traveling solo from California to LTX, is there an official looking for group forum or post for other people attending alone? I want to make friends, but I'm shy. I uh, post on the forum, linustechtips.com. That's where you want to be. Yep. Earlier, you mentioned that you had set prerequisites for your son if he wanted to create a YouTube channel. Could you please mention the goals you set and the reasons for making those goals? Yeah, um, the goal that I set was that he had to learn basic video editing and edit the videos himself. I'm not going to just hand him an editing team to take whatever crap it is that he produces and, <laughs> you know, do all the work for him. And he spent a little bit of time on it, um, but just he didn't have the interest in actually doing the work. And if you don't have the interest in actually doing the work, then I don't think handing you a prepackaged solution is going to teach you anything meaningful about how to succeed in life. And so I basically what, said, okay, well, this is on you. What did he want to make? Um, he actually made a, a couple of videos, one fully and one kind of part way that are just like little science explainers, which I think would be pretty cool. Yeah. Because anything that also encourages you to learn while you are explaining is um, really beneficial. Which is basically my job. <laughs> I should so show him some AI editing tools. As a <laughs> fairly... You're, you're a menace. As a, <laughs> as a fairly new father, year and a half old to a baby girl, what is your favorite, least favorite Father's Day gift you've gotten thus far? Um, anything? I just like Father's Day to be completely ignored for me, leave me alone, and give me some peace for a change. That's what I want for Father's Day. Um, and I, I, I never get that, and I never actually expect that, and it's delightful when my kids, you know, make me crap that I then have to stealthily throw away while they're not looking, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love I love that my kids want to do it, um, but it's it's it really is the thought that counts. I do not want more material things. Don't mind me just buying Father's Day gifts. Question: Any updates on LTT coasters? They're dead. We oh. couldn't figure out a packaging solution for them for the weight that um, was environmentally friendly and also kept them protected. You you basically need foam. And I didn't want to ship, like, glass around the world. Glass and foam. It just felt really stupid, so we killed it. Question for Linus. What racket string and tension do you use? And what stringing machine do you have at home? Uh, oh, I have one from Gamma. It's a something or other. I splurged hard. That was actually before I had the kind of money that I should buy something that stupid. Um, hold on. Let me see if I can find it. <laughs> Anyway, I use BG80s, and I uh, string at 25, 27. Um, yeah, I, the one that I have, oh, is it a, it's a, I don't know. It's an older one, but it's kind of, it's kind of like this. Kind of like that. It's an electronic tensioning one, and basically feature similar to uh, to this one. And that's that's about what I paid for it. Less, a little bit less, uh, maybe like five k Canadian or something like that for it back in the day. Was, I was like, no, I'll, I'll like string for other people, and I'll you know I'll string my racket so often that it'll like pay for itself. Yeah, yeah, that was that was stupid. That was very dumb. 
<laughs> We're all allowed to make mistakes once in a while, right? Last one I've got here for the curated. Line, as you've mentioned, you support Children's Hospital, which is awesome. I do the same. But I'd suggest also Surrey Memorial, who are trying to get more children's facilities but have far less money. Sure. I mean, hospitals. I'm always down to support hospitals. And we actually had pretty good experiences at Surrey Memorial for the most part, mostly. Um, we went there for all three of our children's birthings, I think. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Surrey Memorial. Seem all right. Linus, if you would start a company, would you do it alone or with someone, 50-50 ownership, or just lead to conflict? Would you start LMG with Luke, for example? Wife as a business partner is the best. Ah, oh, it's tough, right? Okay. The reason that starting a business 50-50, 51-49, or whatever it is, with your spouse could make sense is you've already done the world's longest, most arduous job interview, essentially. Yeah, if the you vetting kinda, process is like done. If you kind of think about it that way. However, if relationship contentment and divorce statistics are anything to go by, most people suck at hiring. <laughs> that, is, that is such a perfect way to put that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if I was going to start a company and I was really great at vetting my partner, I would be down to do it 50-50. If I was starting a company and I had any doubt whatsoever in my forever relationship with this partner, you are essentially marrying someone that you start a business with 50-50. If it is successful, most of your personal wealth will be in this business. If you ever divorce, they will take half. You got to think about it that way. You are marrying this person. So with that in mind, um, yeah, as long as you're comfortable marrying them, then great. And if you're not, then you should probably do it on your own. Luke is a complicated one. Would I start a business with Luke? I think that I would be down... So I'm talking non-hypothetically here. So it's post-LMG. I think if Luke started a business and wanted me as a partner, I would be interested. But I, the other way around, I don't know that I would do the serial entrepreneur thing, and I just don't know that I would do a round two. I think that I, I, think that I might be done starting my own business, but whether it was like if it was my son or if it was my work son... <laughs> or <laughs> less less son yeah. more bro um yeah, yeah. but if if this it was accurate. if it was someone that like i i wouldn't mind being work married to essentially i'd be willing to do it but i would rather i'd rather be in more of an investor advisory even boots on the ground like i'm down to work there day to day potentially but my value is is sort of is sort of different you know, and I, I, I'd want it to be, I'd want my value to be clearly understood by myself. You know, that's something that I never really like. I don't like involving myself in things where, you know, I don't really understand what I'm bringing to the table or I don't feel like I'm bringing something to the table. I'd want it to really make sense for the business. I'd want to feel like I'm contributing. And, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I think I'd be, I think I'd be interested. I'd have to believe in the idea. I've had this idea a surprising amount of times. Um, but it's always been like, I, I think the thing that I would be chasing after is the like gritty upstartiness that we had early on. It's like, can we even capture that again? Probably not, to be completely honest. So I don't know. And yeah, it would have to be something that like we would actually care about and want to do and i don't know what that would be that we wouldn't do just like within the framework of what we already have so yeah i don't know linus media group or yvonne queen umbrella corporation that's my new name for it um i like it 
yeah, fun fact, we actually have a company that has like Yvonne Queen in the name of it now. Uh, her uh, her lawyer, well, lawyer, our lawyer, yeah. our lawyer and I collaborated. <laughs> um, the lawyer contributed the Queen part. I like yeah, it. Our lawyer's hilarious. It's good. AJ yeah, and I are going to have to change so much branding. She's amazing. Um, anywho, <laughs> Yvonne didn't want me to talk about that because she finds it very embarrassing. But I um, <laughs> told her I was going to do it. So I'm a man of my word. I think Yvonne, you can never say that I'm anything but. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, what were we, what were we talking about? We the were end of about, the show? No, no, we were talking about something before that. There was uh, starting up companies. Oh yeah, the scrappy. The, right, right, oh, right. Yeah, doing LM, it within the framework. LMG is a great vehicle for us yeah. to kind of do anything. We have like we have resources we have like people and money and stuff we actually have pretty much all the things you would need to do practically anything yeah we just marketing, have marketing business we have to get focused we engineering have to creative not have a ceo with adhd anymore that's <laughs> the key by the way i know i still owe you guys a q a session on float plane i haven't forgotten and i will do it uh, at some point i promise and i promise might to be see a you fun one to just do with taryn next week no, that'll be different. I want to like interview him as a mainline video on the channel. Okay. Yeah, yeah. See you again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Bye. Hockey. Yeah. Let's go. Man, that, that Jesus Twitch thing is hilarious. It's one of those things where it's like, how did I not think of that? Oh, right, because I'm not a complete idiot. You know? Like, just, but in the best way, you know? <laughs> <laughs>